This is Ghana, one of my favorite countries in Africa. Today I'm taking you deep into the streets of the capital, Accra. We're gonna be hitting up markets, eating lots of fufu, kenke, and wache, and we're going to Kumasi, the heart and capital of the Ashanti people. And we're gonna visit one of the largest markets in all of West Africa. Are you guys ready? Let's go. All right guys, mask on, let's explore Accra. We have bangfu and fish. Fresh fish from seaside, no. Okay, so they eat banku, which is basically uh, corn flour mixed with cassava dough, and you mix that with some spices, some fish. This is this is chicken, right? Yeah. And this is like a fishing community. Yeah. You always have fish. Yeah. And here in Accra, you'll find roadside vendors everywhere. Everywhere. Roadside vendors are everywhere in Ghana. I mean, every single place, every street you walk on, you'll see roadside vendors. And right outside of my hotel is actually a chop shop too. Oh, this, so this is like the clothing, right? You know, in Ghana we can buy some chocolates, cocoa. So these are local ch chocolates. You guys don't know, Ghana is known for their cacao. So right here we have a lot of chocolate. We are very proud of our cocoa. Yeah. And these are chocolates. Things bite? Things bite. Mmm. Nice. This one must be like way more milky though. I guess I'll start the morning off with some chocolate. It's awesome, they have beer right there for sale. Just like that. Keep it cool, right? In the bag. And then here just lots of little shops, right? Fabric shops, you know, convenience stores. That's basically what we have here. Just never ending row of shops. To make a uh, plantain. Okay. You want to roast plantain, so it makes you from fire. Roasted plantains roasted plantain with peanuts. Okay, it's a snack, a good snack. Nice for Ghanaians. Yeah, it's a good snack for anyone. What happened? Rasta has a little Here we have way more vendors. Lots of very small street food stalls, right? So this one has like chicken wings, fried chicken wings. This is a crowded street, huh? Lots of people walking up and down the street. There's cars. There's shops. What they? Dude, they carry so many things in the head. So many things. So here, this is a Kenke factory or Kenke boutique. So when you go inside, you can see the process how they are making it. So now, this is the, before they do the Kenke. So yeah, so I've, I've seen something like this in India. So basically, this is a corn dough, right? And they heat it up, they mix it, they keep mixing yeah. it, and then eventually it makes like a paste. And over there, they're, do they're breaking it down. They are starting to do the kinke before they go to cook the kinke. So when you come here, you get fresh kinke from fire before you eat in the, in the early in the morning. Okay, so kinke is a little complex, right? So this is corn dough. They cook it, right, in this big vat. Then you have it here. This is the dough. They cover the dough, they, they cover it with corn leaves, and then they cook it again in the front, so it's cooked twice, right? And then you eat this with what? Pepper. With pepper? Sauce, soup, gravy. Okay. With fish. So with fish. Right, so you open this, yeah. you get the nice dough that's been cooked twice. And my friend here is saying to start off with this, right? Mm. Mix. Yeah. What are the differences? I mean, I tried this one. It's hot. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 Shuto. Shuto. Yeah. Shuto. Pepe and shuto. Yeah. Mmm. Small fried fish. You got bones, but you're supposed to eat it just like this. Like this, right? Kokole. Kokole. Yeah. Mm. That's the name. Kokole. Both mm. sauces, like the gravy, the the chili sauce, fish, kenki. Yeah. You guys enjoy it? Yeah. Mm. I love the kinky. It's actually very tasty. A bit sour, but it's nice. No, mix it good. I won't lie, man. I'm getting full off this. It's filling. Good. That was so good. Delicious. Filling. This is fantastic. Thank you. Okay, so this is a mural done by smart underscore SPF and it's called Bears Fruits. So what do we see here? So it says Uni something? Unity? Can't tell. Somebody drew over it, right? That's somebody drawing on top of it. 
Nice. So it's more like this, right? Over there as well. So there's another mural. So here we have two birds. Also, it looks like different worlds, right? Trust God's love. That's what it says. I couldn't see the artist there, but it's nice. His name? Akosawa? Japon. 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 Beautiful. I like it. So they did like some bubble letters here. Yeah. And then over here is the, that's the lady? Or who is that? That's the, that's the lady. That's the lady. Nice. On a horse, right? Yeah. And what is this to the right? Just like different... Uh, yeah. It's a symbol. There's a symbol. Yeah. Symbols, yeah. In Ghana. I think that's symbols. I think that's symbols. As we keep walking in these back streets, you see more and more murals. Over here, we have a lady from Upper West. Over here is like a, you know, a painting of, a but it's like a traditional Gan Ghana. Okay, so yeah, so there's many different uh, ethnicities here in Ghana, and over here, this is just another example, right? So it's, it's every single one of these is like a different artist. They're going with the same style, though, like you know, an iconic figure here in Ghana on a horse. That's usually what it is, for what I've seen all the all these different ones over here, over here as well on the horse, and this is called uh, I don't even know what that is, Okpok Job. And then this this looks like Simpsons or something. Oh, it is a Simpsons. It's like a mix of everything. I literally can get lost in here. Yes, like yes. it's so many back streets. Hey, can we have a color night? <laughs> They're making basically like fruit candy, right? Yeah. Fruit candy. So the fruits here, then they boil it, they mix it with mad sugar, I'm sure. They put it into these plastic bags, and you open a hole, right? Like this. Mm hmm. It's good. Oh wow, it's almost like a paste. Oh yeah. Very sweet, like a little too much for me. So we're gonna walk through this neighborhood to get to the lighthouse, right? Lighthouse is all the way back there. Yeah. Walking through these tight back streets. You know, this, this really reminds me of other times in Africa, South Africa, I've been to a few places like this. You know, very small communities, very tight and narrow, you know, clothing everywhere, food, water jugs. And as we pass through, we're back on another street. It's like, this is how it is. Just street after street, neighborhood after neighborhood. And this is the Jamestown Lighthouse, built in the year 1930 to replace the older lighthouse that was built in the 1870s. And it's 92 feet high, roughly 28 meters to be precise. And over here, we have the Jamestown Fort. And from here, we have views over the fishing village, right? So all the fishermen boats. What's up, guys? How you doing? So every single day they go out, they get fish, they come back, they bring back and they distribute throughout. All the fish we see in the town, the one we reach the Kiki, they buy from here. Besides tilapia, all the fish that you can see in Jamestown come from right here. And the reason they come from this specific spot is because this is like the fishing port, which was the old harbor, the main harbor, the first one in Ghana, right? So that's what that, uh, that mini dock is. It was like a bigger dock, obviously a lot longer, but now it's like half and they're actually doing a project here. That's why we can't enter. They have some barbed wire, so unfortunately we can't enter, but this is it, right? And here this gentleman is cutting the chicken of the sea, tuna, my favorite. I love this man. This raw, a mm, little bit of soy sauce, some ginger. So he's cutting the tuna into small pieces, then they move it over here. She cleans the tuna, she marinates it in this like oilish red sauce, and then they smoke it. They put it here on the smoker. That's cool thing how they smoke the fish, right? So they, you know, cut the tuna in pieces. You know, clean it, spice it, throw it in there for three plus hours. I mean, I'm sure it's delicious. Smoked tuna. Woo! And it is now really, really hot. It's like 1 p.m. now. Sun is burning. Woo! This is their winter. Ghana winter is basically my summer. All right, guys, let's go inside this chop bar and let's eat. Mask on. And this is alomba buitesh. So it's basically plants mixed with gin, gin. right? So it's like a... So it's sort of like medicine, alcoholic beverage. A bit bitter. I don't love gin, so not my favorite, but I like the the plants, you know, that anyway, they have herbal. The, the, the other type, which is a beer. So. A beer? Yeah. Oh, they wow. have uh, origin bitters. Uh, origin Let's try origin bitters. Origin, origin bitters. bitters. Oh man, this smells better. <laughs> oh, this is smoother. It's not as bitter. Oh, I love the herbs in this one. Mmm, so nice. And this is it, red, red. 
beans and plantains. So you have plantains and you have red eyed peas, right? And then over here we have some chicken and this I'm guessing is cassava flour. Got it. Got it. Got it. Yes. Got it. Look at these beans. Oh, so tasty. The best thing to do is to pair it with some of the plantain, right? So this actually is like a maduro. We call it maduro, right? Sweet plantain. Mm -hmm. So you just mix everything, right? Sort of how it works here. Yeah. Beans, plantain, like that, one big bite. Yeah. It reminds me of a lot of meals I've had in Latin America. There it's more like rice and beans. Uh -huh. Here, you know, obviously the plantains, the beans, and then the chicken. You can also get it with fish if you want, or just, you know, nothing. So it'd just be more like a vegetarian meal. Mm hmm Thank you. Well, let's do it. You divide this one into two, and you pour this one here, and pour this one here. Okay, so basically they boil that water, which is basically millet, right? Yes. This, is, this one is the water. And this one is the, the down, the, the down. So this is millet beer, P2. Very complex the way they make it, but basically um, they put it in water, let it soak, the millet, right? And then they dry it. Then after that, they let it germinate in another water, then they boil it, they boil it twice, and then we have this, right? And then it obviously comes in the calabaza, uh, in the seed, right? So they cut it in half, and they cover it, so obviously no flag gets inside. And I think I'm ready, let's do this. Cheers, my friends, cheers, cheers. <laughs> It's a little sour, bitter, right? I've actually tasted something very similar in Suriname in the jungle. They serve it the same in this. So they also brought us the sweet pitu. So it just looks a little darker, right? A little cloudier. Mm, yeah, super sweet. Mm. It's more enjoyable this one. I mean, it's, it's easier to drink. Mm, really good. Too many drive later, we're here on Oxford Street. Everything here in Osu is super close. And right here it says, I love Accra, love Accra. Really hot, dry season. I made it myself. No way. Yeah, I buy the canvas and I sew it with the fabric. This is my handmade. Yeah, the name is Rasta Do It. Rasta yeah, Do man. It. Yeah, man. So you make all this? All of them. All of this? Yeah, I made it myself. Wow. Yeah. You know, I keep on trying my best. Yeah, I want to be the best. For one bracelet, in the olden days, this is the money, this is what we used to buy. Yeah, this is the money in the olden days we used to buy. My man. Try to remember me. Hey, yeah, thank you. Blessed, respect. Thank you. Go, go for this one. For it, good. What'd you put here? This one, you can use to bath, everything is still the same. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, my brother. Respect. Thank you. Respect. Now you guys know if you want to buy some Converse or some, what else you got? Some All Stars. So yeah. Converse All Stars. That he designs himself. Yeah. Come here. Yeah. Awesome. Hey. Good. Thank you. Thank you very much. I don't want to fall here. Yeah. Respect. Thank you again. Yeah. Respect. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm expecting you. Okay. This is great. So Oxford Street is like this, right? Just non-stop vendors selling yeah. different things that they I'm produce. Everything gone. You're the man, dude. Thank you. Welcome. So, it's too tight. You can just lose it. So. Appreciate the work. You only come and support me too. I will race around for you. Over that? Here we go. Inside a tender coconut, the flesh, it's delicious. Mine was empty, his has some, but I'm good. I mean, that literally filled me up. Usually they give me a straw in India, so it takes a while to drink it. Here they give it to you with, oh, you get it. But it's fine, I drink it straight. Do it. Really. This is an old age market. It's over 420 years old. This is one of the famous night markets we have here in Accra. So what we are gonna to see today, this area we are walking at now 
in the mornings it will be busy but now we are going to the other side where it's the evening where we are going to enjoy and see other things food variety of them local dishes uh, meat um, name them all that you can talk of you're going to get them all there in the market this is a famous market because even at 1 a.m you will get food here so if you're hungry at midnight come here come here <laughs> this is it yes, the market the market wow okay so just never ending vendors and right here we have the pork right this is a pork but we call it here domedo it's one of our delicacies so we're gonna try it yeah let's do it oh yeah not so spicy oh. mine is like straight fat and pork rinds mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. oh so good mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. this is onion spot and she does fish and bamboo so as you can see up there these are ready-made fish that you're going to eat she is the best you can have in this area everybody comes here whatever you see here will go off by 1 a.m so basically we just walked into this area and it's just like one two three four five easy like 15 different vendors everybody's selling different things this one in particular has fish so this Smoked fish, right? Yes, yeah, smoked fish. We call, smoked? It, we call it shitolo. Shitolo. And then, then they. Pet fish. Pet fish. Like and then they put it also on the grill. Yeah, it was on the grill. So it's smoked and then on the grill. Over here is fish, more fish. So this area is fish, over there is more pork. Pork. And these ones are fried fish. Fried fish, looks the good. The you see hips up there, oh, they are yeah. fried fish. That looks fire. Yeah, you eat it with kinky or banku, whatever. Or anything super, super spicy, spicy, right? Yes. Here we have the plantains, the main ingredient for the killer willy. Oh, and here he's frying it. This is how this is flagged. This is flagged. Into pieces as you see it. And then they spice it with pepper and other spices. Ooh, so hot. It's so hot, so hot. I mean, it's nice, it's mushy. It's actually like a, another like maduro. Yeah. Like a, almost like a sweet plantain. Oh, okay, yeah. But fried with some spices. Exactly. And ultra hot. Oh, so hot. It's in here, right? Yeah, it's ready for us. Oh, is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Basically like a strip of squid. It's still really hot. Yeah. Oh, cheers, cheers. cheers. Mm. Nice and tasty. Mm. You're no spices on this. No. This so, is like so this easy. Is a, this is the spice that they give you black shit. Oh, they gave you it? Yes. Oh, I'm all about that spice, so why not? Mmm. This is nice. So you understand why I say this is hot? It's not hot. It's not killer hot. Uh, it's good. Yeah. Uh, so good. Mm. Mm. So one of the most local dishes in all of Ghana is porridge. Obviously, yes, this is white very porridge. affordable, right? Yeah, very, affordable. very affordable. One, CD. one CD. So one Ghanese yes. basically it's, CD. It's, for this. Woo! Yes. It's on fire! It's hot. <laughs> dude, I was gonna try it now. He's like, dude, you're gonna burn your entire mouth. You can get it a cup if you want. It's more expensive, yes. more modern way. I want to yes. do it traditional it's way, way, like That's this. It. So I'll have this later, maybe for breakfast. Yeah. Woo! It is like boiling, my man. Boiling, yeah, man. It's still hot. What I'm doing is that I'm trying to mix the sugar that it put in. That's why I'm shaking it like that. So that the sugar will mix it. And here we go, Ghanaian porridge. Mm. Love it, man. It's good. A little sweet, obviously the sugar. It's filling, it's very affordable. One, right? One city, it's 20 cents for an entire bag. This is like a quarter of the bag. You still have a lot left. It's good. This is what the Nigerians will say, suya. We call it tawo here. So you buy this, they cut it into pieces, put some sauce on it, some um, 
powdered pepper on it, spices on it, and then yeah. you people drink with them. You take one, you you have your beer or your liquor or whatever you want to drink with it. Cow. It's the intestine. No way. Yeah. Why is this is the intestine? Okay, so it's basically organs. Yeah. It's, it's a organs. stomach. It's a stomach. Intestines. Intestines. Very this nice. Is the meat. That you and here's the meat. Like the fillet, they call it. Nice. With some spice and obviously onions to calm yes. it down. Calm it down. That smells so it. good though. Exactly. Here we go. I'm gonna try the stomach. Oh. Mm -hmm. That's different. Totally different. That's definitely different. Mm, nice. Spices are good though. Yeah. Woo! Hot. And it's the vendor. So he has chicken, he has intestines, and he has beef. That's it. All right, guys, we did it. We explored the most famous market in Accra, the Usu Night Market. This vendor right here serves millet porridge, a little different from the porridge I had yesterday, which is made from corn. So what she does is she pours it into a bowl or into a plastic bag if it's to go. She adds sugar, she mixes it in. You can also add nuts, peanuts on top. She also mixes it in as well. And then you can get something that's fried next to it, right? She has a little window here. She has like four different things for sale. I think I'm going with like some donuts. Just like that, huh? Yeah. Mmm. Tasty. Mmm. A little sweet, right? The sugar. I like the crunchiness of the peanuts. It's almost like jelly. So this is from Black Eye Beans. Mm-hmm. How no, fluffy it is. I'm gonna dip it. Mm-hmm. Like that. Mmm. Did you say that? Let it soak it. We are in the market. This is never ending. Check this out, guys. So many things here. Never ending produce. Oh, wow. What is that? That's cow leg. Cow leg? Intestines. What snail is this? It's huge. Yeah, this, this, this is from Ghana here. So, normally, normally, there are places where they rear them. Others are in the wild. These ones you see are in the wild. So, they grow by themselves. So you don't have to feed them. They feed on all the leaves that are around it, and then they, they grow. They are bigger ones here. I've never seen a snail this big. Really? The snail is as big as my hand. There are hand. some which are bigger than this. No way. Yeah. They're huge. This is called wele. Wele. What a lot of people use to prepare leather. This is how it is. So they dry it up and then they stretch it to be leather. But we use it because it's meat for us. So there are two ways of using the back of the cow, the sheep, and the goats. Hey, every day, 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 this is a lasa, it's a type of fruit. It's very sour. Yesterday you had some in Jamestown where they were staring at the fruit. Yeah. So that's the that's full, that's the full fruit. It's from the palm nut fruit I showed you earlier. This is the oil we get from it. We call it muchu. Muchu, red oil. And this, when you were eating the red red, this was the oil they put on the red red. Wow. Right here. Look at that. It was pretty good. I it's actually liked it a lot because yeah. th those beans were delicious. Yeah. Yeah. Th this guy, this guy right here, is not stop making music. <laughs> so this is the salt, sea salt from the area. This is the main commodity when the colonization happened, right? This and gold. So Oblondi just means the the white guy, right? The blonde guy. 
<laughs> the section we just entered is the fruit and vegetable part of the market, right? So over here we have tomatoes, we have oranges, over here we have cucumbers, carrots. She's calling me Oblondi, Oblondi. This is the Zomi. This is actually what we use for the red red. So the zoomy, it's like the thicker part of the oil that you put on the beans and then you stir it. And that comes from the palm nut. So the palm nut produces three things, two different oils and a soup. And this is one of the oils. Yes. Sponge, we use to bath. Yeah? Yes, for kids and adults. Some people don't want the wire ones. They want these ones because it kind of cleans their, their body very well. It's more like hay, like dry grass, yeah, right? Wow, look at that. Look at the amount here. So they use this to bathe, right? So they scrub their bodies with it. Doesn't really resemble a sponge. My wife's, her family's from Kalinos, which is an island in Greece. And that's like the island of the sponge divers. And we get like real sponges, like huge sponges. But this is just different. This is like a maze. It's like a labyrinth. Never ending stalls, so much produce, lots of dried fish. So we went from the fruit and vegetable market and over here we have fish, we have shrimp, we have sardines, lots of dried fish, lots of salt, right? Salty. Whoa. This is the pistol and then the mortar. So this is what we use to prepare our fufu that we eat with soup. You know, so we have the stick there and then we have the base where we put the cassava and the plantain in there. And then we heat it until it's all mixed up to become one way. We dress it, put soup on it, and then we cut with our fingers and enjoy it. This is dried tilapia, a little salty. So how's the process here? How do they eat this? So these ones come fresh from the lake, and then when you get it from the lake, you salt it. Once they salt it, they spread it on, on, on the sun. So you use the dry sun to dry it up, and it dries everything up. You can preserve it. This can be there for six, seven, eight months, sometimes a year, wow. if it's in a good place. So you have it there, and people use it differently. Others will cut small and put it in their stew. Others will cut small and put it in their soup. Others will eat it like that. They put it on fire, like roasting it a bit, and then they put it in their pepper, grounded pepper. And they eat it with banku, with kinke, with yam, or any other thing that they want to do with it. So there's a variety way of using the dry tilapia. This market actually reminds me of the market in Shillong, the Idu market, something like that. Very similar, like back in the day, medieval style, you know, just small lanes, so many vendors. The floor, as you can see, it's like some points muddy, some points it's rocky, uh, not paved at all. I'm gonna try this chili. It's really hot. It's like too hot. Whoa, that's the green one. How's the red one? The red one's bad? No, no. Oh, good. I need some dairy, some milk. This one is river fish. This one is called Heniba. So smoked fish, over here we have cassava. This one is called This is huge. It smells good. This is crab. We, we others will use it for our pepper and sun. It's one of the delicacies of our food that we do here. Oh. You know, it's actually a ceremonial food. So these big ones, they're boiled and then eating with kenke and pepper. Wow, these are big. And then over here we have smaller ones. Yes, we have the smaller ones here. This one goes for okra stew. Okra, okra stew. So you see this okra? You yeah. prepare a stew with it and then you put the crab inside. These are the smaller ones that you put inside. I've never been to a market this big. This market is literally forever and forever. You get lost in here if you didn't have a guide. I mean, highly recommend coming with a guide. Don't just walk around without anybody. And also, you have to ask everybody if you can film because no one loves it here. So ask them if you can take a photo. You have to ask every single vendor, photo or video, always ask. So we're entering the fabric section now. You can see fabrics everywhere. Lots of pots on the side, but this is more fabrics, right? So there's a lot of people sewing here, making clothing. So is this all this is all fabrics for clothing, right? Yeah, everything, clothing. everything. Everything you see is for clothing. So 
So this is some of the designs you have um, the guys doing here. The fabrics are plain, you get the fabric and then you bring it to them. They take your measurement, they show you different types of designs that they have and then you will choose from it. Depending on what you will choose, then they will do it for you. So these are kind of um, designs they make around in this area. You know, so these are mainly for females. They have other ones for males also. So they sew unisex here. They are here at a strategic point. I've never been to a market this big. I have to say, this is the biggest of all time. In India, I've been to so many markets, never this big. This is crazy. This is a section of the market. This is just a section. <laughs> All right, so we made it here to one of the vantage points in the center of the market. There's a few different buildings. You can make your way up one of the stairways, and here we're on the fifth floor, and this is a real perspective of how large this place is. Easily 100,000 people selling lots of goods. From what I see here, it's clothing, shoes, beads. Over there was more fruits, vegetables, uh, you know, fish, seafood, etc. Spices and everything. This is where you can get anything and everything here. We are the Makala Market and we are having the overview of the Makala Market. This is a market where you can get from fresh vegetables to fish, to utensils, to fabrics, to clothing, to cosmetics. You know, you can name it, everything. So this is the first shop, wow. Look at these masks. Wow. These are incredible, I love these. Especially that one, that one's, how much does that cost? That one yeah. is 1,005. Thousand five. See this, it's not dollar. I know, you know, you have to come down. No, you yeah. don't buy a lot. Take yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just asking, dude, but you have to negotiate here. Yeah, you have to know, negotiate Africa everything. Do bargain. I know, I know. And this one is the folding table. It's like this for the beach. Wow. So if you want something small, you can buy a small mask, or if you want a big one, you can buy a big one. I personally would go with a bigger one, at least a medium size, like maybe that one right there. Beautiful. Some of these are like wood and then they also put some metal on top, right? Yeah. All right, let's go to the carvings. Over here? And this is where the guys are doing the wood carvings. So the wood carvings, the whole thing, all carvers. These are the woods that they use to make the tables, maxes, and everything we call it ebony wood. Yeah, this is the place that they make the car. You see men are working over there. They use everything made by hand. So yeah, this is all ebony wood. Yeah. I haven't seen it like this. I've never been to a place where all the wood is just scattered. So here we have two wood carvers. One of them is carving a woman's like head, right? And then this guy is carving a mask. And as you see, he has many masks and he just finished. You have the end result, and then you have before they, they add like the sanding and polishing, right? So they change the color. In this workshop, they are painting masks. Over here, he has these long ones, they're like the face of a woman, right? He's painting it red eyes, red mouth, and it has silver and gold. And over here, I like this one a lot. This is like the coolest one. These are all Ashanti masks, Ashanti masks, right? This is, uh, so he's adding beads to it. So he paints, he adds like a glue, and then he adds beads. Really, really nice. And then after they're done, they sand down the inside, they polish, and they're ready to sell. These are great. I like these the most, man. These are really, really beautiful. Do the cabin, we do everything here. I'm doing three days or four days. Three days or four days? Yeah. Right across from all the carvers, we have a little shop. It's full of antique masks. All these masks have over 70 years. So 70 year old masks, really beautiful. So you can see these yellow, green, aqua, red, 
You have different animals. You have like elephants. You have people. You have birds. I like these. They're cool. So these are really expensive though. They're antiques. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The antiques are very expensive. They're worth like 500 US or something. Some yeah, crazy, 500. right? Yeah, But it depends on what you want. Some yeah, yeah. are 1,000, 2,000. They're beautiful. Even 300, 200. Yeah, it depends on what you want. And then rice, white rice. This is the wache, right? So wache is basically just the rice and the black guy bean. So the beans, right? Get some nice beans, get some of that. So wache reminds me of arroz con frijoles, which is basically like black beans with rice. It's nice though. Mm. But it's stew, I mean, the smell, the aroma is popping out. And this, look at this. Whoa. I think this is like the fat of the goat. Oh, there's the, there's the back? That is the women. I love this. And the only thing they cook in this kitchen is panku and tilapia. So we sell tilapia. That's the main thing you sell. That's the main thing we sell, just tilapia. With eight sides. Eight sides. Yes. So they have killer willy, they're gonna about to put in the fryer. They have a few different things here, you know, mainly cassava, everything coming from cassava. And then, I don't even know, so spice, that's it? Red pepper sauce. We're gonna wrap up one fish that's almost done. So it's a big piece of tilapia, and you have it with a hot pepper sauce. Yes. So we're gonna wrap it in one of these craft boxes. We're trying to be eco friendly. Add a little pepper sauce. This is onions and pepper. Yeah. beats. What we do here is we recycle bottles <laughs> to beads. So first, at the moment, some ovens are not working. So we are moving to the bag there to start it all. In case you guys don't know how they make beads, basically they recycle glass bottles. Then they heat them up, they break them down, they pound them, eventually you get this, right? So these are a few of the different beads. We have many different colors. Obviously that is just by adding uh, some color, right? Some dye, right? So you have yellow, blue, green, you have small circles, long like cylinder type. You have so many different styles. And what they do is they turn them into bracelets, necklaces, so you have a variety, right? It's a big thing here in Ghana, the beads. Okay, let's go see. So these are some of the bottles. This is where we pack the bottles, pick it from here, wash it nicely, because we don't want any dirt on it. So you have to wash it and dry it for the water to come out of it. Now that we saw the, you know, the recycling process, how they break it down, grinding then they bring it here they mold right they have these molds they put the glass in turn it to beads whoa so this is like a tandoor oven right here wow so hot i was a little confused of how exactly this works but it's very very simple once they break down the glass into like a glass powder they put it into these molds okay here there's a mold for these bigger beads but you also have this mold Yes, yeah, so these are for smaller ones, right? But you mix it with these dyes, so they have different colors. So you mix the dye, then they put it in, they put it in the furnace, they heat it up really, really hot. From there, these guys sort of shape it and they make holes in it, right? They make a hole, they let it sit, let it dry, let it air dry for a while. How long, one day? Yes, a day. A day, that's it? An hour to dry, all the whole day. And then from there, it goes into the workshop where the women then put, make it into a bracelet, into a necklace. I love seeing this process, just don't get too close to the inferno here. After producing every bead from the fireside, we take it to the washroom and wash it nicely and then bring it here on the table to dry it. 
after drying then the ladies come and then they pick it and then do the finishing of it so from here we are going to the ladies side what they're making at the moment are necklaces but you can change this for a bracelet you can just convert it or you can just flip it and it will be two bracelets with an as a necklace right i love these the colors if you see the colors there's so much detail and every single one is different so it's like it's almost like somebody painted inside here, right? Like almost like a mosaic. I'm serious though. There's so much detail. So you got red, orange, yellow, green, like every type of color, right? Beautiful. So the last thing I think we have to do is buy some stuff. <laughs> yes. All right, so this shop is no joke. Yeah. Every type of color, color size. size. Whoa. Yeah. So you create all this. Yes. Nothing comes from outside. Everything comes from here. Comes here. So Beautiful. these ones are all the powdered glass beads. The glass powdered beads. You paint on it. So these are the outcome of it. And then the ones on the wall are the transparent or the clear glass beads. So I think for my daughters, I'm going to buy necklaces. So I might get one, something like this. Really beautiful pink, right? And then the other one, something blue. I mean, this is nice, right? I don't know how much for these. Twelve each. Nine each. Nine each. Okay, I'll take them both. So this table, all these, they're not completely finished yet, right? So you have the beads like this, but they have they don't have elastic. They just have a piece of rope. So you're supposed to buy it. You know, buy the ones you like, cut the rope, then with an elastic, make your own. Okay. So, because I don't want to do that, I can go over here, and here I can buy these, right? I like this though, and they're ready. Let me, can you help me with this? Yes, those ones are ready. TK Beads is open to the public every single day except Sundays from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. and on Saturdays they close at 4 p.m. You can come do the exact same tour I did. Go to the back, see them molding the beads, Go in, see in the workshop, you know, depends on what day you come, what time. We'll be doing different beads, more people, less people. And you can come here to their shop and buy some, right? I highly recommend buying some of these. Remember, these in the middle, you buy them and they don't have elastic. So you buy, you know, variety, different variations. And then you can make your own bracelet stator or your own necklace. And then over here, these are perfect for your kids, for girls. I mean, for my kids, I got them three of these, right? I bought one for my niece. I bought two for myself and I spent 37 in total. So I spent less than like nine dollars. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, drinking Akpitishi. Akpitishi. The local original gin. So this is gin made from basically extracting the sap of the palm tree, letting it ferment, distilling it, and then mixing it with herbs. And this is it. <sighs> Some strong stuff. This is fire. So it tastes like juniper. It has that taste, the gin taste, yeah, yeah. but it's different. It's completely different. Let's try it, right? So I'm gonna try their honey, and this comes from their lodge, which is literally on the border with Togo. Mmm. So it's not too thick and it's not too watery, because I've had both, you know? It's a good middle. All right, so I came back here to the same place that I started the first night, having some banco and tilapia. Isaac, yeah. this is a crazy sense of smell here. <laughs> the tilapia, the ginger, the banku. I mean, the grill just feels so good. All right, guys, so we just made it back here to the old My Colonial Suites. I'm gonna have a quick dinner. Oh my gosh. Oh, look at that. What a monster. Banku with tilapia and some spicy sauce. You pull apart the flesh, make sure there's no bones there. Ooh, it's still super hot. Grab some of the banku. Grab some of the flesh without bones, right? And then you dip here. Yes, sir. Mm-hmm. I'm actually enjoying this a lot. It's so good. We are here at Tatale, which is one of my favorite vegan places in Accra. One of the dishes is called African chips. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's a mix of the plantain and yeah. everything, right? They look like maduros. Delicious. This is tofu, right? That has been baked. No, it's not tofu. No? It looks like tofu. 
Oh, okay, no, because I saw him cook some tofu. I didn't know yeah. that was it. Okay. Well, maybe he put some tofu in it because he said he made a special recipe which was a bit different. Okay. Yeah, we need to check that. We need to check that. Mm. And then this is cassava. Mm -hmm. It is yam mm -hmm. and plantain. And by the way, cassava is not originally from here. That came from Brazil. Yam is local. Yeah, that's indigenous. Cheers, my friend. Cheers. Mm. Oh my god. Mmm. Mm. It's very good. Okay. Alright, you, you do the honors. I do this? Yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna cut it. This. Wow. It's almost like. It's like cake. Yeah, I was gonna say almost like a. Oh, yeah. I don't know if like you can see that. Cake. Yeah. Mmm. Whoa. So it is plantains. Yeah. Ooh, I like this. This is uh, obviously this is more very, gourmet, very, right? Very, very good. <laughs> All right, my friends, we have the kebabs. This yeah. is a vegan kebab. Yes. So this is tofu, though. Yes. This is tofu. This is tofu? Yes. <laughs> mm. Mm -hmm. Super simple. Mm -hmm. Super good. Simple, light, enjoyable. There's lots of flavor. So enjoyable, huh? I love the spice. It's like <laughs> they have to go all out with this super hot spice. <laughs> it's with every dish. Mm. This is good. Mm -hmm. um, this is the igushi. Igushi okay. is, a, is a stew made of melon seeds. Okay. Um, actually used a lot in Nigeria. But uh, also in Ghana, it's, it's definitely used. It's very nice, gives a very really nutty, nutty flavor. Wow. Let's see. Oh, it's, it has that red palm oil, huh? Yeah, everything has the red palm oil. Everything. It's, it's kind of like the olive oil. Exactly. Ghana. Cheers. Cheers. Mm. This is my favorite. Okay, this is the abolo. Abolo. Abolo is like a typical dish from the Volta region. It's made with corn. Okay. It's not the healthiest because they probably took out all the healthy parts of the corn and then they made kind of like a, a starch from it. Okay. Surprise, surprise. It has lots of vegetables, black eyed beans, okra, zucchini, probably chili. <laughs> Cheers, man. Yeah, so this is like a, almost like a nice bean salad, right? It is, yeah. I'll say, everything was awesome, this is the best. Oh yeah, I This was like so tasty, yeah. so creamy, mm. perfect. <laughs> okay, so we made it here to the neighborhood called Spintex. I mean, it's like a nightlife area. This is Catfish Point and Grill. Awesome. Look at this, you have catfish over here. They're cleaning the fish and they're putting it on the grill. So Captain, how's it work here? You come, you order a fish, you order by weight. And we first weigh the fish. Uh, we have this guy there who kills the fish. We have this guy who mar marinates the fish. And then the fish goes onto the fire to be grilled. You know, so there's this, this a process. And everything is done right before your eyes. You enjoying fresh food. Your food being prepared right in front of you. All right, this is our catfish <laughs> from Captain. I mean, that aroma. <laughs> oh. oh. Seriously good. Seriously good. Oh, wow, 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 wow. Oh. So this basically has been baked on the grill, in a way, right? Steamed. Steamed. It's a very, steamed, I steamed. think it's called papillot. It's okay. like a French way of doing it, huh? Woo. This is the life, this is the life. <laughs> kind of like a soda. Mm. And then it's sweet, but not too sweet. Exactly. Really, but I mean, don't let it fool you. You will feel it later. Yeah, yeah, no, for sure. <laughs> this reminds me of Todi from Kerala. Ah. They do the same thing, but they extract the, like from the flower. Oh, I don't know nice. how that works. Yeah, they don't they don't cut the tree down and pull it out. You know. Ah, nice. Hmm. Mm. Oh, I can have another one for sure. It's good, huh? It's the best. Hmm. Mm. And you drink it traditionally from the calabash. Always, right? Yeah, this is the way to do it. And if you want, you can take this too. <laughs> Here you go. Thank you. Round two, guys. All right, so uh, I'm gonna take you to the botanical gardens. And uh, something that most people don't know is they have some really nice kebabs there. So you can enjoy a nice surrounding. And then uh, they have like different cuts of meat they grill on the spot. It's cool. Okay. Wow, so we're entering now. Total. Wait. Loving 
the entry. This is like a red carpet event right it's, here. It's quite dramatic, right? With yeah. all the palm trees. I mean, palm trees forever. Super, super tall palm like trees. Sick, big trees. Like these are like ancient mammoth trees. Here. Wow. So there's a lot of trees here. Obviously, yeah. Botanical Gardens. But you said there's some like monsters. Yeah, monster trees. Hey guys. I'm going to look for them while we're enjoying our kebabs. Oh, man. I'm hungry. It's already 1130 and I haven't had breakfast. Ghanaian kebabs. Who knew? Yeah. One down, easily. Oh, I can have like 10 of mm. Look at this tree. Humongous tree. Huh. I mean, the width is like double my height. Crazy. Yeah. So the roots, it fell right here and they just left it here. It's been here forever? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. That's cool. It's all natural. All natural. And I these... mean, if you look at this tree, you know that this is not the top, that point. So it is huge. They have these ancient wow. trees here. Huge. Yeah. Look at this. Man. Massive. Oh wow, it's hollow. Yeah, like bugs are in there massively. Yeah, it's falling apart. It feels almost like cork, right? Thing. Yeah, exactly. That's how it Ooh. feels. Like. There's bugs here too. Lots of bugs. This tree is really the highlight here. <laughs> Look, just massive. Humongous. Came to the top, walking around. Don't suggest doing this. I came up here for some photos, but don't do this. Also, hard to get down. The wedding, huh? great yo so this is the botanical gardens and besides eating kebab there's not much to do except for looking at beautiful trees on Sundays they have weddings right now they're shooting a reggae video so it's kind of fun to just have a look at people and what they've been doing and hanging on the grass how you guys doing we want to see some carving another craft market <laughs> wow look at the size of that giraffe gotta see it gotta see it look at this it's a 10 foot giraffe. That one's huge. This is the size of me. Mask, you have canes, clothing. Everything's wood carving here. Chairs, stools, you got globes. It just doesn't end here in Ghana. Some of the best craftsmanship I've ever seen in Africa, right here in Ghana. That's an amazing shop. Thank you. Dude, Thank you. just go to where they're sawing it, right? Where the sander is. Woo! It's huge. I mean, obviously it's close to the COVID, right? But most of the time, it'd be like 20 to 40 vendors. Yes, right here. What's up, man? How you doing? So this guy right here is carving a palm tree, right? Yeah, that is like basically the fruit of life here. Everything is made from the palm tree. Palm wine, palm oil. You got the palm gin. You, you burn. Cool, cool. We also make uh, what else? Well, the shell is different though. That's a different tree, right? Yeah. What is that? Lion. Lion. The lion leg. Dude, that was so good. That was so good. Perfect. Hey. This is all antiques, right? Everything antiques. antiques. So antiques here. He's making everything. His yeah. workshop's right in front. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love everything. Next time I come yeah. with a few million dollars. Everything in your studio. Yeah, well, next time. I, next the background. Time. Yeah, I know, so I know. Talk of more business. You made everything by yourself. These are my simple tools here. A lot of the masks with the metallic on top, right? Yeah. Aluminum. Aluminum elephants. He also has small masks like this. Yes. He has drums. So drums. many good things, my friend. And a Beautiful. Box. You made that box? I do the box myself. Good. You're gifted. You're gifted. Thank you. David. Yeah. Let's cool. see what's happening here. Now, this my daddy. He's working. This before you, all that you took, this is the root. The starting, you get the wood like this. You plane it. After planing the wood, then you do it like you, you, you got from the other brother. Yeah, that is the process. So, this is the first process. After you draw, then you start working on it. Exactly, so they draw what they want to do, then they start carving, eventually they sand, they clean it, and then they get these beautiful products. Bro, thank you so much for the gift. No mention, welcome. You're the man. Hello, Hello my friend, Hello. thank you. So just so you know, over 180 shops, 500 different craftsmen, and yeah, this is it. So many good things. This guy's awesome, he gave me a gift. They have endless masks, endless elephants. David, thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank, thank you, we'll see you next time. All right. Take care. Let's go. Yes, off to the fruits. Oh, I need some mango right now. Oh my God. It's hot.
So oh, hot. so hot. Ready for some mango? Yes. Some pineapple? I need it. Some pawpaw, some <laughs> banana, some avocado, some sweet potatoes, some onions, some tomato, some spring onions, some coriander, some parsley, some cocoa pods. Is that what we're eating? No. It's, they, that's what they have. She like literally recited everything. <laughs> How much is this? 24 all. 24 all? We pulled up to the fruit stand, the second we got here, all the ladies came up to the car selling all their goods, right? We got out, and Lota's buying a bunch of stuff. Bananas, what else are you buying? Pineapples. Grapefruits, they have local grapefruit. Here they have mangoes. Yeah. They have yam. They have, oh man, look at this huge mango. Nice, ripe, yellow mango. They got watermelon, bananas, pineapples. More mangoes, I mean mangoes are endless. This is good. Yes. The little ones are nice. One. Eggplant as well. And vegetables. And vegetables, huh? I want to try a mango. Do you guys cut the mango? Can you cut? I think we're going to ask the ladies now if they can cut a mango for us. We can have, uh, we can have a bit of mango here. Everybody here is really friendly. No one's shunning me for the camera. This one, but you have to get it actually even more ripe because else it gets really tangy. Very sour. They call it African star fruit. Madame, what is the African name? Alasa. I don't know. The alasa. Alasa. Yes, alasa. So we're trying some amazing mango. I'm getting more now. More. Mmm. Oh, it's sweet. It's perfect. Sweet dog. Sweet dog. Sweet dog. Mm. My favorite fruit on the planet. I know. It's Best so fruit. So good. And it's season, huh? It's mango mm -hmm. season now. This is the time to do it. This is the time to bring it. Mm. Come on, here, come back. Keep going. These are the actual cocoa beans. You let them dry and ferment, yeah, right? And you blend in yeah, you actually don't eat the whole thing. You just suck on it and then spit out the nut. Mm. It's like slimy. Mm. A little bit like leche. The only thing is you can't actually bite it. Right? Very fresh. Mm. But these are the beans. Yeah. These they let ferment, then they dry them. Mm -hmm. Then you grind them up. And this eventually becomes the raw cocoa. Cacao. Mm -hmm. Chocolate. Yeah. Cacao is good, but this is better. <laughs> These ones need to be a little bit more ripe. It's the cacao or the cocoa, right? Oh, you have a seed. You have a seed. Mm. No, but the flesh around it. Mm. Yeah. Slimy. Yeah. A little spongy. Mm -hmm. That's good flesh. Mm. That's it. That's the seed. My friend, thank you so much. Thank you. Bye bye. The first dish she's making first is called gable. Gable, am I right? It's gablet, yeah. It's a very gablet. typical dish for the northern regions in Ghana. Once he's done mixing the dough with the waters, then he boils it. Throws it in, you know, softly, each one slowly, but then he has to move them because it gets stuck to the bottom, mm. right? Yeah, and then they pop up, and then you let them cook. It's, it's like a longer process than frying, mm -hmm. because this is beans. Bean flour takes longer to cook, yeah. so you leave it longer. Wow, I like this. Right here, they're making the starter, which is corn porridge. She's added corn flour, mixed in water, boiled it, and that's it. And here they're frying wagashi, which is cheese? Cheese, yeah. It is a local cheese, freshly made, 
It's mm. kind of like halloumi. You fry it, it's so good, and it's made by the Fulani, which is a nomadic tribe up in the north of Ghana. I mean, it looks delicious. This is like, uh, we have it in Latin American culture, fried cheese, thick, white. Exactly, it caramelizes a little bit, so it's oh. a bit sweet and crunchy. Crispy too. It's gonna be good. Oh, yeah. can't wait. Okay guys, we just watched the entire process of this beautiful meal. Wow, I cannot wait to dig in. This looks beautiful, so many different colors, textures as well. And this, what do we have here? I'm just so excited that you finally get to try some of the northern food as well because you've been in Tamale but you didn't have the time to really try the food. Exactly. So we're here at Northern Plata and we're gonna try some really amazing traditional northern foods. TZ, to Zafi, is the starch dish of the north. Okay. It's made with millet originally. Luckily today it's made with millet as well. And we're having it with ayoyo leaves soup. And ayoyo leaves are hibiscus leaves. They're quite tangy. Sorry. That's the green stuff, yeah. The slimy stuff. It's slimy because it's leaves, so it usually ends up to be slimy. And then the other is a vegetable soup with a bit of fish in there. Great. Yeah. Okay, so... so we're gonna dig in, use our hands, we wash them, we should be good. Let's go. Alright. Oh yeah, right away, it like, feels different. Mmm. Oh man. So okay. it's like a... It's like almost like a cream spinach. Yeah. Similar. I like the density of the of this starch. I am, the density is good, right? It's chewy but not too thick, mm -hmm. not too slimy. Mm. Uh, the soup is really good because it's light. So light. And you know in Ghana flavors are quite heavy and intense. Mm -hmm. So having this green light soup is um, is nice. Mm. Oh. It's funny because people would not expect to eat like soups with your hands yeah but they do it all day here yeah true true it's um you know the Ghanaian diet is still a traditional agrarian diet so mm -hmm. they have the soups on the fire all day long they have their starches ferment and then at the end of the day when you come from the field you'll eat it Lotte what do we have next all right let me present to you Gablet Gable. Gable is made out of bean flour, okay. which they mix with uh, salt, water, and a secret ingredient, and then they boil it, so it becomes like these. Um, um, like more like a dumpling. Dum exactly. Thank you. That's yeah. the word I was looking for. A dumpling. Um, then we're having it with wagashi, the best, which is the fried uh, cheese made by the Fulani, the nomadic uh, people in the north of Ghana, and then uh, there's some fried onions on top. Uh, and then we have three dipping powders. So there's the chili, uh, we have the suya spice, which is the local spice, and then we have kuli kuli. And kuli kuli is like fried peanuts, and then they make them into a flour again. Oh, this wow. is very typical for the north as well. Okay, so how so do you dive in? I think we're just gonna get one. Okay, so it's one. And then you're just dumping it, I guess, a little bit of everything. Okay. Because we like everything. So let me see. Definitely get an onion in there. Maybe two. <laughs> yeah. Or three. Yeah. Alright. Mmm. 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 Oh, and then we didn't even have it with the wagashi yet. It's so good. Mmm. Black eyed beans. Black eyed beans. Yeah. So, have you ever had a dumpling? Obviously. When you bite in, you have something else inside. This is like the whole thing is the same. You know? Very nice. So it's a little chewy, but because you have all these other flavors coming in, mm -hmm. it's just the ultimate savory bite. Yeah, yeah, I mean, super savory. Love this, the crunch. Oh, it's the whole aroma of the onions. Yeah, I'm sorry, I try this one. So I dip but this But also well. the kuli kuli, like the peanut flour. It's so good. Mmm. That's the groundnuts. Oh, yeah. Mm. Oh, yeah. Mm. It's crazy good. I'm gonna dip this into everything. Is that what you're supposed to do? I don't know. Mm. Get a few mm. things here. Oh, it's really good. Who's part of the Ghana food movement? Oh yeah. I am obviously. Uh, you are now officially. <laughs> like. This is absolutely diverse. It's unique. Everything comes from the farm. Wow. That's raw ingredients. It's fun so to eat. Yeah, super fun. Yeah. I mean, I can eat this whole thing myself. This is like an appetizer for me. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> so should I dip this in here? Why not? Yeah, you should do it. Do it. Mmm. Let me mix it. Yeah, I'm gonna... Let me say that? Yeah, exactly. That's what I wanted to do as well. Oh, yeah. Ooh. 
Mmm. What a plate. Mmm. It really is amazing. It's my first time trying cheese in this country, by the way. First time. It's also because they're not big on dairy. They're so not this big. Is, this is the only thing. I'm so Everything surprised. Everything else is coming in as well. It's not. This is the only indigenous uh, local dairy they have. Okay. Everything else is flown in. But that's surprising to me because uh, you go somewhere, some place like Albania, the whole thing is all about dairy, mm. yogurt, milk, cheese, all day long. But the, everything is probably because they can have a lot of cows there, and the climate here is not really yeah. good for cows. Oh, okay, okay. So there's very well, little. Well, it's weird because there's so many cows. <laughs> there are cows. There are cows, and they, they are, and they are they are herded by the Fulani, and they make the um, they make the cheese. But and they there's don't. definitely, but it's not it's not a perfect country mm. for dairy or cows. Okay. Enjoy. So guys, we're not done yet. We have a surprise. We're taking you to have some Ghanaian wine made from cashew and from cocoa. This is not from grapes. Mm -mm. I'm so excited. I'm excited I'm too. I'm thirsty. Uh, <laughs> I'm thirsty myself. Mm. You gonna finish this? No, you do it. I'm gonna finish it. This place is awesome. Ser I'm gonna take my friends here. Yeah, huh? yes. Massage it in. Last bite, guys. Mm. Mm -hmm. It's time to try some Ghanaian wine. Excited. This is unique. It's different. Made from cacao, made from cashews. Oh, can't wait. Love this place. Ghana. My last day. Been here two weeks. You've changed my life. All right, so uh, we're gonna close this adventure off with a little wine. But this wine is not made with from grapes, but made from cashew and cocoa. So there are two different wines, and we're gonna taste them at Sai Wine Cafe. And this is it, Sai Wine Cafe. Open seven days a week. Make a reservation. Okay, so we're here at Sai, and look at this. We have a cashew wine, a cocoa white wine. So. These are two white wines. They also have a red wine. Unfortunately for us, they're sold out. Yes. But I'm excited. They come from the Volta region. Yes, this is also where they grow the cocoa and the, um, the cashew and the coffee. So uh, we're gonna try this, and this is super unique for Ghana. They're not using grapes, but local ingredients, and we're gonna have these wines. And I guess this is the first Ghanaian wines. Yes, yeah. which is super exciting. Cheers. Here goes. First time cashew wine. First time. Oh, it smells good. Mmm, I didn't expect that. You know, it's wine, but at the same time, it's, it's so different. It's so different. It has more of an earthiness to it. Very much, yeah. yeah. So it's I'm not sweet, to... it's more dry, right? You know, it has curry leaves. Is that what it is? I'm getting curry leaves as a flavor. Yes, you know? it is. It's curry leaves. What is that? Curry, curry leaves. leaves. Curry leaves? Yes, wow. I'm fully getting curry Which leaves. Which one is that? The but cashew. Did you, did you guys do the three taste and three step where you smell first and then taste? Yeah. 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 Smelled. <laughs> I didn't hear you talk about that. <laughs> well, we don't go too deep into that. We're not pros here. I'm not a sommelier. Okay, okay, we did. Yeah, we did. You're curious about this one, right? I am. Coco. Round two. Chocolate wine. Whoa. I know that smell. This is. I'm definitely getting cocoa. It smells like fermentation. That's what it smells like. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Oh wow. It's different. You know, smelling it, I felt like a little bit of cider. Oh. Like just smelling it. But this is uh, definitely not cider. This is definitely, we discussed wines from Georgia, right? Uh -huh. Being a little bit more uh, stable, farmy. Yeah. This is definitely. So more of like a th farmy this wine. This one has that too, yeah. Mm. They're both very earthy. Yeah, but I think the cashew one is really refined. Mm -hmm. uh, if you could push it into a corner, that would be Europe. Okay. And then this will be. Georgia? Georgia. So, this would be like Van Naturel. Yeah, Caucus. Caucus area. Of, uh, but only because you want to compare it, but you don't have to compare it, you know? It's just, it's very unique. That smell though. Yeah. It's good. Mm. You know what the cool thing about these wines is? It's really about taking these local ingredients, which are not per se consumed a lot for the local market, and just adding local value, making something completely new out of it. It's really interesting. People come here to like relax and enjoy, you know, right outside of Kumasi. And today what we're doing, we're gonna eat and hopefully we see a cacao farm, but we're also gonna see the lake. 
if you would like to enjoy your weekend, to relax, go to Lake Bosunti. There are few guest houses along the lake that you can lodge in. On this road going to the lake, it's very windy, some potholes and tons of tiny, tiny villages. So many of them. I mean, this is how it is in Ghana. Every road is like this. So small villages, police checkpoints, etc. Every single village in this, like on the street is basically like a junction, right? So people slow down, there's a lot of speed bumps, and a lot of people selling things. Here so far, we just see a lot of palm trees, right? And up in the sky, it looks like smog, it looks like pollution, it's actually not. That is the wind from the Sahara Desert. If you guys don't know exactly where we are, obviously we're in the central part of the country. You have a few countries above us, you know, Burkina Faso, I forgot what else is next, but then it's also the Sahara Desert, right? Sahara Desert, all of Northern Africa, and this part is more forest, more jungle. To enter the lake area, you have to pay 10 CDs per foreigner, five CDs for somebody from Ghana, right? So it's a dollar or two dollars, and this is it. Change the landscape completely. We're higher, you have beautiful views overlooking the lake. You know, you don't see it perfectly right now because of all the Sahara Desert winds and uh, you know, the sand in the air, but we're getting there. The, the road isn't the best, but it's nice. It's a nice little massage. Right, Ben? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's good. It's good. Road. It's good to feel a Ghanaian. Yeah, and yeah. Take this massage. <laughs> That's when you really know you're in Africa, when you have the massage. This is nothing compared to those crazy ones. The ones where it's huge holes and you dive in and they're wet. <laughs> so the entrance is at the north part of the lake. There's two roads, one that goes completely around and then this one that goes straight in from the north. But then it becomes very, very narrow and winding and then it finally starts to touch the lake. So, and we're here, lake right in front of us. And this is the main town, Abono. So there's 30 towns, this is it. Lake right in front of us. So we're gonna buy some fried fish from this lady right here. We're also getting some, what is it, kenke? This is amazing. So literally the fish was pulled from this lake and this is what we're gonna eat. I'm excited. It's a small fish, lots of bones. I don't know how you eat this, but you probably have to eat the entire thing. So what she does here is she has the fish, she cleans the fish really quick, she literally throws them in there alive. They boil, they fry, and here what she's doing is she's grinding up some chilies, cutting up some onions, and this is gonna be awesome. I love pepper. This, like spicy chili, the best. Me? Fish? Chili? Yummy. Yummy. You're very nice. This is kenke. So, this is uh, cassava dough, no? But this one's different because you guys wrap it banana leaf, no? Banana leaf, so it has like a different smoky banana taste, right? Yes, this is better. For me, this is better. With banana f uh, uh, leaf, so good. Thank you, thank you. Let's see how hot it is. Mm, it's good, it's good. So it's spicy, but also because they added tomato, calms it down, right? Mmm, that's hot. <laughs> very, very spicy. I had like nothing and I already feel it. And here we have the lake. Unfortunately, it's very, very cloudy. You know, overcast here. But it looks huge. It's not that big. I mean, I think it's like, what did I tell you already? Like 10 kilometers in diameter. So not huge, huge. But it reminds me of Lake Kivu in Rwanda. Similar over there. Look at that. Just pristine jungle. And here we have, I guess it's like a water taxi, right? It takes you to other villages. Is the food ready? I think the food's ready. Let's see if we have it right there, right? Oh, yes. Can can fish. All right, my friend here, he's getting yeah, me a club beer. Club beer? Yeah. I need this because I am so hot right now. Yeah. Look at this. You know, you know, you, know you have white one. Yeah, white one. Yeah? It's Luca. So you have like, like Luca. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. Oh, that's local. I got the white one. All right, my friend, I'm going to try this really fast. This is local. It's finished. I'm coming. It's Luca. Thank you. Oh. Thank you. Oh, that's strong. Thank you. Oh. That's good. Need some club. In this heat, I've been in the fire for four days straight. Some good stuff. 
So this is the kenke with the banana leaf. Yeah. First time. First time you're having it. This is Fanti Keke. Fanti are the people from Almira, right? From Almira, And this is made with corn dough and then wrapped with banana leaf. So how do we eat this meal? Just like we eat every meal in Ghana, with our hands. So you break off a piece, you like that. Nice piece right there. Then you have to go in here and pull off some flesh from the fish, right? So just pull a little bit of flesh, mix it with some of that spice, and grab some kenke. Here we go. Mmm. You like it? Mmm. -hmm. I like the kenke. It's different. Mmm. Spicy. And if you're a vegetarian, just eat the kenke. Don't eat the fish. Mm hmm. And a little fish, do you eat the whole thing whole? Yeah. This is a nice meal, man. Mm hmm. I love, love a spice. Mm hmm. So here I got a tiny fish, literally just took off the head and the tail. Mm hmm. Chew slowly. Lots of bones. Mmm. Mm. The chickens here are fighting for the food. It's tilapia you ate many times. Oh, it's tilapia. <laughs> but this tilapia, that's not, this is not farm, this is wild. Mm. That's why they're smaller. I didn't know it's tilapia because of the size. The ones I've seen are in Accra, huge tilapia. It's hot now. <laughs> now I'm feeling it. <laughs> Grab some kenke, right? Come over here. Grab some tilapia, some flesh. Basically bind it together. Here, the good thing is that it literally just becomes almost like glue. Like it just sticks together, like that. Well, that's fine. You know, I wasn't a big fan of tilapia until I came to Ghana. Now I am. And we have chickens all over us. So, because we're in a uh, small village, we gotta wash your hands here. It's like this. It needs to clean off all the spice. And to end the meal, flush down all that spice with some cold lacquer. This is the beer you'll see everywhere here in Ghana. Club, premium lager. Thank you. <laughs> thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Ah, thanks. thanks guys. That's it for the leg. Can't really do that much here. He's telling me you can take a, a boat if you want to. It's 200 CDs. It takes you out. You just see the lake. I don't think it's really worth it right now, especially because it's like, you can't see anything, right? We're gonna get in the car. Let's go to the burger cow. Cacao farm. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, you're the man, dude. You're the man. Hey, you're the man, too. Next time, next time, next time. Next time. Next time. Nana Obua Nipa. Obua Nipa. Nana Obua Nipa. Oh, no, no. His jersey is the best. His jersey. Yeah, yeah. Juventus. Yeah. Juventus. So, this area of the country is cacao farmers and plantain farmers. That is it. Basically, the same farmer does all these types of crops, well, right? It, it, they do grow other crops okay. as well. But cacao, plantain remains their first um, cash crops. All right, my friends, this is it. Cacao farm. Going into the bush where the farm is. Incredible forest. And this is it. Yep. Cacao trees. Look at that. It's been a while since I've seen them. Whoa, so many little flies. Oh, wow. They're like hovering over all the rotting cacao. The fruit, the cacao pod, starts with the flowers. And then... After some few days, the flowers will fall and the pot will start get, getting bigger slowly until uh, it reaches the maturity. When it's mature, it turns the color to yellow. Here it has grown, changing the color to yellowish. Uh, right here. So let me get one of these. Slimy. 
Mmm. Mmm. So you basically just suck off a little bit of the moisture. Yeah. A little bit of the skin. This area. You can dry burn it. Then they use the, that ash. Mix it with palm oil to make soap. Yeah guys, we had to exit the you know like a cow tree area because that side of the farm, way too many flies. First of all, when we want to start the cacao farm, we always start with plantain or banana. One banana or one plantain besides one cacao. And this is for shade? And it's for the shade. We explored the farm, we're gonna get back in the car, go to the village and see them drying the cacao beans. That heat, man. Woo! This is Africa. Walla walla wa. Hey hey. Waka waka. Hey hey. Africa. So this is a small mud village. Again, there's 30 around the lake. And uh, this reminds me of like my time in Malawi. Very similar, you know. <laughs> I don't want to hit her fingers. That was actually really hard. I never really felt the bottom. When the ladies do it, they hit the bottom. You hear it, boom! And right here, we have. Hey guys! <laughs> Got the goats. Thank you, thank you. Boom! Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Bye, so we walked around, literally. We did a big circle in the village. And I think here we have it. Drying cacao beans. You have the scent when it's fermented. You can still uh, smell it. Took off my mask. The aroma hits you. Wow, it smells like, like straight up fermentation. In Ghana, most of the communities, uh, they don't process the cacao beans into something um, consumable. So we just dry the beans and then we sell it. So we're not gonna be able to taste like a cacao bar or anything here. You could just come, see it, smell. The true experience is just walking through there. <laughs> that was, was awesome, I liked it. Thank you. Uh, Boom. The owner, literally in front of the cacao, just said, hey, you wanna actually eat something? I'm like, yeah, I wanna try some cacao. He has some right here. 100% cacao. The flavor is like that. Mm. So it's very, very bitter. Yeah. I need 85%. 100% is too much. <laughs> if you guys like dark chocolate, this might be way too dark for you. Very bitter. But it's good. All right, let's go Kumasi. Yeah. yeah. We just left the lake area and now we're headed one hour straight north to Kumasi, the garden city, second largest city in the country. 2.2 million people live here. They have the largest market in West Africa. Can't wait for that tomorrow morning. They also have a lot of craft villages around Kumasi. So I recommend two full days. Luckily for us, we have three nights. So we have tomorrow and the next day. I'm excited, I can't wait for the food. He was telling me the street food here is so bomb. First time on a road this bad here in Ghana, wow. We have an ambulance in front of us. The road is not paved, lots of bumps, lots of dust in there. We just lifted the windows, turned on the air conditioning, and I'm keeping my mask on just in case any more dust gets in the car. This is intense. Ooh, how long like this? 20 minutes? Yeah, about 20 minutes we'll be out of this uh, dust. 20 minutes? Yeah. Oh my God. I finally experienced the African massage in Ghana. <laughs> I did. Oh, oh, that's nice. <laughs> just close your eyes and just experience it. Nice. Yeah, it's nice. It's nice. I don't think it's so bad. It's enjoyable. If you close your eyes, it'll put you, it'll put you to sleep. For, for a few minutes. For a few minutes, right? Yeah, it's okay. For a few minutes, it's okay. But you can't be doing this every day on the road like this. Yeah, and you were telling me the, the eastern corridor, right? Yeah, eastern, yeah, corridor eastern corridor is like this, the whole thing. It takes forever. All right, guys, we are entering Kumasi now. This is Kumasi. As he told you before, lots of traffic. 
crazy amount of traffic and the city's big really really big so have some patience take it slow i'm actually looking for some street food because i'm starving uh i didn't eat enough should i eat more <laughs> all right we're crossing the road getting some street food all right guys so this street food vendor has a lot of proteins here okay so he has beef skewers he has hot dogs and he has chicken. I got two beef skewers. I think it's like five, so it's like one dollar. I'm just, I'm starving right now. I need to eat something right away. And that's how it is. The music blasting, people walking around. Pretty awesome. Oh, and we also got some fried plantains. Two, right? Cost two, one each. Pretty good. Music's way too loud though. Let's go back to the car. This traffic is intense. Do you see that line right there? Oh my gosh. This is like my liner right now. You know liner, right? Lunch and dinner. 5 p.m. Having a nice beef kebab. Oh yeah. Mmm. Nice and crunchy. Salty. Good spices. An onion in the middle. Oh, it's a good snack. Street food, my favorite. We're going to stop right here to see how they make a delicacy, a local delicacy called etol, which is basically boiled plantains with egg, peanuts. Then uh, spices like pepper, uh, onions, and then they also add boiled eggs, as you said, and then avocado as a, as a garnish. And then it goes with the palm oil. Peter, he's taking me around for today. Peter, let's do this. Nice one. We're walking in here? Yeah, we're going right around inside. Right in here? Mm -hmm. Wow, yeah. look at this. Around like that. Incredible. Then... Here we go, walking into the kitchen back here. So we have a mini market here with chickens and then the ladies making the etol. Thanks, bro. Thank you. Blondie, blondie. <laughs> you got me, blondie. Blondie. <laughs> That's what they call white people, blondie. <laughs> All right, here we go. Let's enter this place. This is chicken. Most of, most of them are the bread winners. So here this lady has a bunch of chickens, so she's just, you know, taking it apart. Basically, she's the butcher here. Taking out the organs, taking out the skin. You have chickens roaming, you have kittens everywhere. We are now right here with um, the, the local dish makers. Let me put it so. Uh, the dish uh, called Eto, and the ladies behind are going to take us through the rudiments. They, they are now boiling the, the plantain, they have to mash it, and all those things. So, we're going to have an empir empirical experience of this once rich local dish of the Akans of Ghana, which is sadly dying. Delicacy, everybody in Ghana loves it, really hard to come by. And it's main, mainly for like birthdays, weddings, right? It's I mean, like more yeah, of a delicacy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then normally, uh, it's, 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 it's sad to say, the elderly and people like me, we patronize it. The, the young ones don't seem to understand or even know it. Wow. Yeah, but then as I hope what you're doing will, you know, yeah. help a good deal to, you know, for promote sure. it because it's very rich. Whatever they use is organic. Here we can see a little bit of the process, right? Just the boiling of the plantains and then cutting all the green onions. Eventually, they'll start grinding all the chilies and all the, all the spices, right? Wow. So here, they're preparing the peanuts, they're cutting the plantains. Oh man, the sensory overload, the sounds. Smells good, it smells really good. You know, these are the, the spices, the local spices. Pepper, onions, tomatoes, and what have you. They're grinding the, it in the local grinding you know, bowl. I mean, guys, I smell the chili. It hits you right away. Yeah, it's, it's, it's like oh. boom. So potent. Oh, it's so delicious. So, is the green one? Is the red one? Yeah, exactly. Wow, I can't wait to eat this. Yeah, this one has a lot of iron. A lot of iron? Yes. And this one has a lot of chilies. <laughs> exactly. And, and tomato. I'm sure tomato no, as well. No, no, no? This one, no tomato. Oh, okay. Um, and, and, and onions. Just onions. Okay, wait. Okay. Yeah, there's a lot, of, a lot of chili like seeds in there. And that's why it's really spicy. That's the best. Salted fish. The salted fish. We use lots of onions for a sauce. The grounded one, and then we use the sliced one as well. 
the slice from when you buy, it is sli it's chopped in slices so that they fetch some on what is bought. And so it gives you more taste. They believe the onion, you know, has a lot of, you know, goods for the body. The, the thing with the onion is that it also helps calm down the heat, right? Yeah, exactly. That's a big, that's a big aspect in, in African Asian yeah, culture, yeah. right? Exactly. Always. So if you got anything spicy, add some onion, it'll cool it down. So the atoll is not done being prepared. They have to finish boiling the plantains. Once that's done in about 90 minutes, roughly two hours, then it'll be ready and then we can eat. So we'll come back, we'll finish the process, we'll eat, but first, let's go to the market. Let's do it. Remember I told you guys earlier there's a lot of traffic here in Kumasi? It's no joke. So all those people coming in, so many vans, so many trucks. We're walking through a back road trying to get to the market. The market is about five minute walk this way. Yeah man, what's up? Good? Welcome to Ashanti region, especially in Kumureka. Thank you. Uh, this is all used clothing, you know. So we're going up to the top of this building to get an epic view of the entire market. Huge market. I mean, the one in Accra is huge. This is bigger. This is the biggest in West Africa. Well, maybe it's the biggest. They're saying there's there's more markets that are going to become bigger. You know, especially in Nigeria. But we'll see. It's gonna be fun. That's all the market? Yes, it's from your far right end here, all the way down to, you see the shakes? Wow. In a row like that. That's crazy. Yeah, it goes far, a very big place. That side's under construction. Over here we have just never ending vendors. You can see people walking with every type of good possible. Dude, there's an end here. I gotta get myself the, the jersey, the Ashanti jersey. We'll find one. Yeah. Told you guys, I've been to many markets in my life. The one in Accra was the biggest. This is even bigger. Now we're gonna go into the market. We're gonna see everything, you know? Soft one, uh, Jenny. Wow. Mm. Good taste. I love this in the morning. It's the best. Wakes you up. All right, my turn. Now let's get the tender coconut. Like a spoon. Just cook. Mm. Mm. The best. Mm. Pull it out. Oh yeah. Nothing better. Mm. Whenever I'm in India, South America, anywhere in Asia, the tropics. Friend, thank you. Thank you. It was three CDs for one, so that's like a dollar twenty or a dollar ten for two, something like that. Loving this market and everybody's super, super friendly. And right here, this is the name of the market, Gajetia. Yeah, we're going to, this is a modern market. You know, the Kajetia terminal, that is part of it. It's a huge place, but it's modernized. It's about uh, two, three tier, you know. So this is the modern side of the market. It's modern, so it's covered market. Very similar, obviously, but just more modernized. Is there air conditioning? No. No air conditioning, but uh, they, they do it's, uh, that it's, it's very cool inside. Fresh meat, fresh fresh meat. Uh, I mean, that's the abattoir where they sell uh, goats, cows, 
You can see some cow heads, all the guts, the intestines, everything is eating here. Yeah, so here we are. Let's, so basically here's the butchers. Yeah, this is the beef, the meat market. Yes. Right? The meat section of the Awesome, wow, look at that. That's cow heads? Yes, yes. Is it all cow heads? Yeah. Incredible, look at the tail. Whoa, I haven't seen it like this before. Compare my head to this one. Yeah. So I would like one day you take me there. Everybody wants to come with me. Yeah, 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 yeah. In the bag. Yeah. You be got you. Then what is your name? David, David. Uh, this market is sensory overload. Everywhere you hear cutting, you hear music, people talking. I mean non-stop. You are really, really friendly. And right here we have the organs, intestines, stomach, liver, kidney. Oh, this place is great. Wow. I love going to a place like this because this is the real locals. This is where people come, they buy their goods, right? So they buy their meat, they take it home, or restaurants come and buy as well, right? Exactly, yeah. The, this is my favorite part of the meat. Yeah. The tail, the cow tail. Also buco! So we just left the meat market, now we're going upstairs. Now we're in the middle of the market, and there's a huge ramp that takes you up to the next level. Mm -hmm. Another ramp to the next level, so that's it. Just ramps going up, right? Yes. And here in the middle, we have like different symbols in Asante culture, right? Exactly. So this one you said is like infinity, right? Exactly, yeah. The Dinkrahini is infinity. And then the one after with the swords across, that is the symbol of authority of the chief or the king. Royal family. Exactly, yes. So anytime you see swords in Ghana, yes. that means the royal family. Exactly, yeah. It's, that's boss. That, these that's symbols, boss. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> exactly. Snap me, I'm eating. I'm eating Kenki. Let me let me eat some. Oh, ah! <laughs> That's good. Kenke, so okra and fish. And Yummy. Fish. I'm eating. I'm eating. I'm eating kenke with okra. The food has finished. Everywhere we go, it's just like non-stop stuff. This is like all the tools here, huh? The blacksmiths sell all their stuff. I'm, I'm lost, you know. Yeah, I'm lost too. There's a labyrinth. Crazy. What is this? Woo! This is the best part of a corner market like this. You really like get into the real daily life. This is what happens every single day since the beginning. Well, at least since they started this market. And over here on the stairway, you have epic views over the market, the street side of the market, right? A billion vendors over here doing construction. Oh man, just the people never end. Only 2.2 million people here in, in Kumasi, but it feels like five. It just, they're all clustered in this one area right now. Wow, it's wild walking through here. It's, uh, it's hard to explain. Until you're here, you don't really get it. But being in a incredibly diverse, colorful African market, it's so unique. How you recommend doing at least one time in your lifetime? At least once, and come here to Kumasi. This will blow your mind. So many different lanes. We're back here with the women making the atoll, and as you can see, now they are pounding the plantains, yes, right? Yes, they're doing it. They're, they're, they're pounding or mashing. They're mashing. They're mashing the. Exactly. Yeah, they mash it to, it's to like pound. The and then later on, they, they, they add all the spices together into the plantain. Exactly. So it makes it. Uh huh. So it's like it almost like seals together, like almost yeah, like binds together. It doesn't bind like the food. It's it's it makes like this. Okay. Yes. It so it, like it's this. more like crumbly. Uh huh. Yeah. Like yeah. Fufu is very like sticky, like yeah, sticky. Yeah. It's slimy. Uh -huh. I guess that's yeah. the, like the texture, right? Yes. It's a little different. This is more just like yes. crumbly. Yeah. Falls apart. It looks really good. Yes. So you mix this with spices, with avocado, mm -hmm. with fish. Exactly. I mean the whole shebang. Yeah. Can't wait to try it. Yeah. This well, is man, we're gonna try it as soon as it's ready. Yeah. I think it'll be ready pretty soon, and then we we'll, ah, want to enjoy it. You know. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You can you can you can have a feel of the. Um, a peanut butter and the spices, you know. You can try it. Oh, really? A little bit, yeah. Hey, this one, yeah. Oh, that's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> mm. 
Mm. It's awesome. Mm. So crumbling plantains. Having to, you can imagine having, having to add avocado to this, it's super. They boil the plantains and they also boil eggs on top. So what you can see here, she's taking, removing all the eggs and now she's gonna remove the plantains. This is the experience, guys, in the kitchen, in the fire. Woo! <laughs> Peanut, spices, plantains, onions, avocado. Yes. This is the red plantain, and this is the green one. They mash it differently and then they mix it together. That gives you that, you know, um, kind of sweet taste. Uh -huh. Now they finish and everything is packed up on this, you know, in this pan. And then it will be sent to the market for people to buy and eat. You know, five cities. This is gonna be an amazing, delicious dish. I mean, the amount of different flavors and textures here is crazy. Between the peanut sauce, the salty fish, the nice avocado, man, the plantains, and the spicy sauce. Yes, I can't wait. I'm so hungry. At all. Total cost is five CDs per person, right? And together it's two 10 dishes, CDs. ten, so that's two bucks. Yes. Two dollars, <laughs> and we both have breakfast. Uh huh. We also need some drink, though. Uh huh. Make, make later, maybe. Make me a gin. <laughs> ah! Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So we just walked over to like a building here, mm -hmm. pulled up a stool, got a table, and that's it. This is gonna be wow. Look at that. This looks incredible. You so fire. Okay, just one first bite. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. That peanut sauce. Mm -hmm. I already feel it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let me add some more avocado. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. This is an ancient old, you know, food. Ashanti food. The, you know, fruits come in seasons. So. As they are in season, we eat them when it's gone. Okay guys, let's dive in. And we're not using our hands because we have nowhere to wash our hands, so we're using a spoon. Just gonna dive in. Mm-hmm, mm. Oh man. So unique. Mm. You know, country, it's all about these doughs, right? Cassava dough, mm -hmm. corn dough, plantain dough. Mm -hmm. But it's so good, nice and mushy. You usually pair it with some, mm -hmm. you know, some protein. This time mm -hmm. we went vegan because he was saying that tilapia had a lot of bones. Uh huh. Uh huh. Yeah. Mmm. Oh, it's spice. It doesn't have any maggi maggi sauce or whatever. Mm -hmm. Everything is. Mmm. Nice. I love the the oil. Mm hmm. Oh yeah. Mmm. Mm. Can't eat all. I can eat all. You? Sure. So good. Mm. So different. And having the avocado, love it. But is it spicy for you? Mm. It's like you're dripping. I'm <laughs> dripping because I'm hot. I'm like sweating. Mm -hmm. I feel some water. Mm. Mm. So we're waiting for the whole day for this. Mm -hmm. The whole morning. The whole morning, yes. Mm. Wow. Mm. Green onions too. Yep. Nice. Everything's so good in here. Mm. Peanuts are crunchy. So this, you can only find here. Mm -hmm. If you want to try Atoll, come to this market early morning and you'll find a vendor mm -hmm. around 10.30. Mm -hmm. Super filling, mm -hmm. delicious delicacy. My friend, thank you so much. Cheers. Pleasure. Mm. Mm. Too much load in my mouth, you know. <laughs> it's a big load here. Mm. Mm. But I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying it. Mm. I, I don't remember the last time I, I ate this. You know, I should be, start eating this more often. I love it. I had mm. never meant adding more spice. 
I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna ask her for more spice. Sure. <laughs> yes, yeah, it's not spicy enough. How it doesn't it like with tummy, you know? Now it's a little dry. Nah, tummy. Mm. I'm used to this stuff, bro. Mm. Pepto Bismol. <laughs> mm -hmm. mm. I'm almost done. See you. Don't eat too much. We still have a whole day. <laughs> I'm gonna burn it. You know, we're gonna do a lot more work. You know, as we walk around and talk, you know, to burn spice. Exactly. Mm. Mm. Okay, my friends, I am really full. That was like a brunch, basically. It's 11.20 already. We're gonna go back deeper into the market and see what else we can find. Thank you, thank you. Thank you all, thank you. Bye-bye. Bye, bye. 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 <laughs> bye. Thank you, thank you so much. All right, yeah. man. God bless go. you all, God bless you. Woo. The smoke. Uh, smoke is too much. Yeah, it's it's pretty tough when you're in the fire every day. I can't even imagine them, their whole lives doing this. Oh yeah, except Sunday. Sundays is their day off. This is a corn corn do. Fermented corn. So we're walking back to the covered market. We want to see how to do the textiles and the fabrics on top, right? And then from there, we'll go and explore deeper into the main part of the market. But first, we're going up here. So we're back in the covered modern part of the market and we're in the top level, last floor, right? This is the textiles, all fabric. Over here, they're sewing, basically tailors, just making different things, basically like fashion designers, right? This whole area is uh, uh, dedicated to fabrics, but this particular place is more for the a rich, you know, kente cloth, which has to do with our heritage, as in fabric. Kente is a royal cloth, and they are used on festivals, weddings, very, very important occasions by chiefs, queen mothers, and you know. Now it's a matter of affordability. These are all hand woven. Exactly. I love these. These colors yeah, yeah. right here. This is like more Ghanaian, right? Yeah, this is all Ghanaian. And then right over here, the guy is uh, sewing. The third floor is massive. You can get lost here for hours and hours and hours on end shopping. Yes. So you go in any of these tiny shops, buy some fabric. Outside they have the you know the seamstresses or the tailors. They call themselves designers here. A little different, obviously, because they're designing goods. <laughs> yes. Designing clothing. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so you can see them. You know, every shop there's like one or two guys outside sewing. So just buy whatever. Come here, and that's it. We can literally spend another few hours here, but we're gonna go to the next part of the market now. Mm -hmm. Let's go. Yes, let's go. Woo! We came through here, we went back through here, blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. So we did this whole thing like four times, but now we're going in. Wow, man. Too many people. Yes. And this is the market. Hey, what's up? Hi. Hey, what's up, what's up, man? You good? Yeah. Awesome, man. Yeah, this market is awesome, man. Man, you gotta be careful where you walk, though. Lots of stones, lots of dirt. Wood, holes, I mean, it's never ending. A little dangerous, guys, so be careful here. Really be careful. All the way around here is for um, second-hand, you know, clothing. Yeah, all the way from Europe, Asia, and what have you. Yeah. So if you're in the States, this would be something similar to like a flea market, okay? So all used goods, everything here. If you want to, you know, buy a bag, they have luggage as well. They have over here clothing, jewelry, uh, uh, rings. Now we're getting deeper and deeper into the market. Over here, many different types of vendors. So there's like the black market, 
you can exchange money if you have American or European or I don't know pounds from the UK you can change it there to actually give you a little bit better rate you know right now it's five to one CDs to a dollar so many vendors man literally a vendor every, every like four feet is a vendor Jollof rice. I've tried it many times and this is like a salad. Looks really uh -huh. nice and creamy. Everything good, good, good. Everything good, everything good. Good, good. What are we trying? Yeah. Oh. Ah. 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 Yeah. Ghana. Ghana, 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 Ghana. 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 Yeah. Ghana. Everybody here is super friendly. Oh, and they have jerseys. Look, they have jerseys. Oh, nice, nice. London. America. Miami, Miami. Was there a train track here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, train track was here. It doesn't function anymore. It used to function in the 80s. But it's collapsed. And when the train is coming, they hear the, 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 the sound, the horn. They all make way. When it goes, they take over. No way. Yeah. <laughs> There's one like that in Thailand. I think it's like in Bangkok. Something similar. It's like a market where the chain runs through. So guys, good. <laughs> Um, people can use evil powers to harm you and so these are some of the things they use to counter them black magic so these are dead chameleon they garn it with other stuff they use it for um, um, charms and amulets for protection against some you know evil spirits and then yeah it's very taboo right i mean it's it's like black medicine black market medicine yeah yeah so they use a chameleon i don't know for what but they've been roasted right it's, it's dried you know, it's dried he just dried oh my god we had to get out of the market it was way too busy too many people and that's it my friends we explored the central market of kumasi one of the largest markets in all of west africa exactly. and we saw how they made ato good ato yes. ato yeah. we saw the entire process from start to finish yeah. it was delicious mm -hmm. add some spice make it a little spicy exactly it definitely is a mix of flavors there with the avocado nice crunch of the peanut tasty tasty and tasty. this market is like sensory overload this blows Accra's market out of the water. I mean, Accra's market's big, but this is bigger. Much this bigger, is like bigger. crazy. It's, it's bigger than big. It's bigger than big. You got traffic, you have people, you have butchers, yes. you have vegetables, clothing. Everything. What else? Yeah, Tailors. Yes. I mean, it's nonstop. We actually didn't do that much. Mm -hmm. You could go way deeper into the central market, like mm. way, way deeper. Yes. We only went to like two lanes. There's like a hundred yes, yeah, yeah, lanes. Yeah, yeah. Guys, let's go inside. I'm starving. And this is it guys, look at this chop bar. It's like 12 foot ceilings, really open space, tall plastic chairs, plastic tables. So what do you do? You can either go straight to the bar area, get a bitter, right? Usually that's what we do, we probably do that now. And then from there you get a drink, have a drink there, walk over here to the buffet line, and there's 10 different plates, right? So there's 10 big, you know, soups, and you, you know, choose what you want. Mm -hmm. So they have tilapia, they have, you know, bush meat. I don't know if they have bush meat. They, do. they usually do, right? Mm -hmm. uh, they have chicken, they have a few other things. So we order what we want, then we sit down, and we eat with our hands. Mm -hmm. So bitter? Let's do a bitter? Mm -hmm. Yes, pizza. Let's do it. Hello? Yeah. Hello? Hello? Hey, pizza. And this is for me guys, so this is origin bitter with mandolin, right? Mandingo. Mandingo, mandingo. Yeah. Okay, so I tried something similar with mandingo and Africa, herb Africa, Af something like yeah, that, yeah, the yeah. mix. This is different though. It's good. It's medicinal. All the bitters are medicinal, straight up herbs. Mm. She gave you a lot. It's a lot, my friend. Okay, right? All right guys, enough of this bitter. Let's get some food. Now we are at the entry place, so you can go back in there, have a close of view, and you can interact with the service. I mean, the attendants as well. I got kitchen access. Let's go back here. Wow. So here we have okra stew. What is this fish? Fish stew. Tilapia. Tilapia. That's tilapia. Salmon. Salmon. Okay, perfect. And what is this one? 
It looks so good. I don't know. It looks like pork. It looks like pork. Okay. So like I said, they have a huge mix of different things, right? So different poultries, different fish, but they also have snails. Which is this? That's let's go. But this is snails right here. Look. Yeah, snails. It's like no. Oh yeah. Right there. Look at that. I'm gonna eat the snail. I want a snail. That's exotic. Yeah man, this is awesome. So many, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten different ones. They also have grass cutter. Grass cutter. I'm going with the snail though. Maybe snail, grass cutter, some wild stuff. I'm gonna get exotic here. I have to get in line as well. Mask on. Yeah, honey whiskey. Is yes. it good? It's good. Try it, try yeah. it. It's good. Appetizer, you know. Yeah, yeah. Always. Yeah. Every top bar you go to, you get an appetizer of a drink, and then you go in. Exactly. If you don't drink, obviously skip it. But if not, try it. Why not? <laughs> We've been waiting an extra five minutes here because they ran out of fufu. And now she just brought some more fufu. You and me are going to sit till we eat and you see the difference. I hope you learn from me and you eat as we do. I eat everything with my hands. With a bad hand? No utensil. No utensil. Oh, Here we have the fufu. This is his, right? So that's one portion that is cassava dough mixed with plantain. Plantain, yes. So it's really delicious. It's like almost like a like pasty, sticky, sticky. Right. Yeah, very yummy. Yeah, oh, yummy, yummy. And then with this, you get this huge bowl, right? Mm -hmm. And this bowl, then you ask for whatever you want here. You get, yeah, so whatever soup, it's basically big stews of different animals, right? So you got grass cutter, snail, chicken, tilapia, a salmon. I mean, so many different things. I can't wait. I might get a snail, grass cutter. Let's see. This is 40 cities. The snail is really expensive. You can imagine this one is 30 cities. I told you the grass cutter too is expensive. 20 cities. Six dollars for the snail. So eight dollars for the entire plate. Exactly. Yours is uh, three dollars. Three dollars. Yeah. All right. So we have our bowls, and now I have to wash my hands. Put some soap on. Wash your hands. Always wash your hands. So they give you the water. They give you the soap. Every single time you do this, obviously, this is the way they do it. India, very similar, except they have the faucet on the side. Mm -hmm. So you wash your hands and you come back. Smell, smell your hand. You, you smell it. A little more. A little more. All right, done. Yep. All right, my man. Let's do this. Ooh, the fufu is so hot. Yep. So fufu. Yes. It's nice. Oh, spicy. Is it spicy? Um, I wonder if you can. Oh, uh -huh. let me see. Yeah, man. I'm cool with it. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> spicy. Nice go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. Very nice, man. Soft. And that's the goat, my friends. Look how delicious this is. So what do you do? Grab some fufu, pull out that paste like that, and you go in. Good. Mm. Let's do this. Let's just dive in. Oh, this is hard. So just do it without the meat. Without the meat? the meat separately, yes. Oh, like that? Yeah. Uh -huh. uh. Mm -hmm. Yummy, yummy. Yummy, yummy. And if you have any bones, you just yes. you know, suck that right, thing, you know? throw it in. Oh, yeah. And this is... <laughs> the almighty snail. The almighty snail. Look how monstrous this is. I've never seen one this big. Mm -hmm. Escargot at its finest. African style. Yep. Well, let me bite in here. It, look how big it is. <laughs> they give you a giant portion. Mm -hmm. so you That's for us, you know, we eat, normally we eat, we, we like every food. You see, I have my little okra. 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 I take a muzzle of the fufu and I box it with the okra and then, ah, it's gone. It's gone. Still enjoying it, you know? Yeah. Uh huh. Then I use my bare hand to fetch the soup. Mm -hmm. One more. One more. Mm -hmm. You're too much, dude. <laughs> okay, so snail time. Just jump in here. Uh -huh. It's tender, you know. Just it's the best. Mm -hmm. I personally love snails. People don't like it. Escargot. Over here, say, 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 delicacy. That's blue one that's so expensive. Mm -hmm. mm. 
so big, so tender. Mm -hmm. Definitely gaming. Wow. Awesome. Good. Wow. Keep going in. The only problem is I can't really mix this with the fufu. Mm -hmm. Can't no, like no, break no. it. You you uh, you have to chew it separately. Mm -hmm. It's like one of the most exotic things I've ever eaten. Mm -hmm. A big snack like this. Yep. And you eat the whole thing, right? Fufu is one of the main things to eat. Yeah, all over Ghana. Mm -hmm. Fufu is everywhere. Fufu. Yes. So delicious. Look at this. Mm. <laughs> so the fufu, I guess the best thing to compare it to is like rice and pasta in terms of how filling it is. Exactly. Just fills you up. I love the sauce, but I've noticed you guys don't eat vegetables just like straight. No, we, we hardly eat. Hardly. Mm -hmm. Also dairy. No dairy. No dairy, nah. We're not fan of dairy. No. It's weird, no? I've been to some countries where everything's dairy. Mm. Cheese, mm. milk, yeah, no. yogurt. No. Mm. It's got me full. I just finished. Well done. My Let me give you a clap. Well done. Well done. I told you, but the snail, I'm done with that guy. Sure? Yeah. You hold it down. Why not finish all? Try, try. To be honest, I don't know if I can go deep into his body like that. Okay, drop it into mine. Yeah, you want it? Yeah, man. Ah. Gotta clean my hands. Put some soap. Every time, right? Like that. I share with you. Uh -huh. mm. Mm -hmm. mm. Yummy, yummy, yummy. What a taste of local dish. Ah. This is why Ghana is so special. So when you're done with your plate, what do you do? The, Very the, easy. The, 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 the left soup, this is what you do. <laughs> So tasty, that peanut. Mm -hmm. mm. Wow. It's a nice peanut veg gravy. A little spicy. Yep. So fire. Oh, it's good. Mm. Let, let me finish it off with a grass cutter meat. Though. Grass cutter. Mm. I'm just finishing this. Mm. I can do another dish. No. <laughs> All right, now we're done with the food. We've seen it from the seven stage. Now we're going to the kitchen to see how it's prepared. Maybe the pounding and then how they prepare the bamboo and the other. other. Yeah, kitchen's over here. Wow, the goats everywhere. And this, my friends, is bamboo. My friend. Thank you. Go, go. I go here. I ate the goat. Oh. Oh, wow. This is a peanut butter soup. So there's beef in it, in the peanut butter soup. Exactly. And that is what we all eat. That's all we eat, right? Every time you eat a soup, there's peanut butter in it. Hey, my friends. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So right here we have the cassava. So they just finished cutting it all. Then they boil it. They boil it with the plantain. And that's how we make the fufu. Mm -hmm. Right? And they're not making fufu right now, right? No, no, they're not. No, they're done, basically. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, that's it, guys. That's yeah. it for this place. Thank you. Let's go to the next place. My friends, uh, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And that's it for CC's Chop Bar. So good. You have to come in when you come to Kumasi. Now let's get in the car and keep exploring. So this is Kumasi, second largest city in the country, cultural capital, you know, it's the capital of the Asante people, 2.2 million people live here. When you come, take at least 36 to 48 hours. Half a day, you can explore the entire market. After that, you can just go around, try different foods, see the museums, that's sort of what you can do the first day. Next day, you go out to all the different um, like cultural villages or like craft centers, right? One of them is a weaving village, one of them they do um, carvings, right? So they make masks, chairs, etc. And as you can see along the road, you know, lots of vendors, lots of housing, there's a CBD area, and what else? Yeah, a lot more, you know, a lot more. Everybody's busy doing something just to make a living, you know. The women in particular, I mean, most of them are the breadwinners of their home, you know. 
understandably so the accounts and that was the Asantis are in the matriarchal system. So the family is rooted in the woman. So they work hard knowing that the kids are there, you know. 15, 15. Oh, okay, give me 20. And here, Bruno, 15 traffic. Yeah, I bet, I bet, I bet. Five, five, five. Five, five, five. 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 Five, Nice, I mean, it's it's nice for this. The steam was better now, because the other one was like, messed up, so it's a nice cover. All right, my friends, we made it back here to the Central Market. We're gonna walk around and look for some street food, some kebabs, beef kebabs. Ben, you hungry? You want one? I am, yeah, yeah, good. <laughs> We're going here, this is a Muslim enclave where they sell, you know, you, you, look, you look at their costume. The ladies and the way they dress, that's you, they're Muslims. And kebabs are mostly in the Muslim enclave. And normally at a drinking pub and at pubs and stuff like that. This is a kebab. It's, it's not a usual kebab you see, you know, you know, on a wooden stick or that kind of thing. No, this one they cut them into pieces and it's in the paper, and then they roast it as you're saying. They add all the spices to it, and it's roasted and it tastes so good. It's fresh and yummy. To be honest, I thought it was pinke. Uh, it looks like uh, it pinky. looks like it's just the way it's wrapped. But the guy has a grill in the middle, and there is the meat. So what is it? Is it beef? Yeah, it's beef kebab. It's mm -hmm. beef, right? Beef, beef and goat, or lamb. Yeah, this is beef. Oh, so he cuts it right here? See the wow, and look at this. The, the fire is just like, man, I'm getting cooked right now. Uh -huh. Woo! It's hot. It's super hot. This one is all sheep. I thought it was beef. It's all sheep, and they wrap it with this, like, paper, and then they put it in the middle. So they grill it first, then they leave it here, and it's sort of, like, smoking, right? It's still like getting cooked a little more, right? Has a smoky taste to it. I've never seen a grill like this. I mean, a massive grill on the side. These are already packed. 10 CDs each, right? So roughly $2 for this. Delicious, delicious, right? I'm telling you, this kebab, you taste it. You, you know that you've never eaten any kebab like this one. It's yummy, super. All right, I'm gonna have a taste of this. So it's sheep, right? With some like, what is this? Like some chili? Ah, Oh my god, that's so good. Mm. Very tender, juicy, a little gamey. Oh, I love that. That's actually like pepper with some spices. Not too, not too hot though in terms of spice, right? Wow. All right, I'm gonna take one. Thank you, my friend. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That's why. Okay, so we bought two. It cost yeah, 10 yeah. each. 10 each. Yes, so $2 two dollars each. Two US dollars each. So we got what we came here for. Let's get back in the car and let's go get a drink. I need a beer. So is this area considered like central central or what is this area? Mm, the central business is not here. This is the area is more closer to the King's Palace. And then this part is more Muslim. The other side is uh, Ashanti's. Yeah. And that's where the market is that we went to this morning. Massive market, you know, one of the biggest in West Africa. Crazy experience there, you have to do it. Just going through here is, is different. Uh, I mean, it's hilly. It reminds me somewhat of Shillong in uh, Meghalaya, India. Just in terms of the hills here. Um, also, there's tuk-tuks here, which is very different from Accra. Accra is no tuk-tuks. So if you want to do a tuk-tuk ride, you can do it here. And yeah, in terms of things to see and do in Kumasi, not so many, mostly outside of here. The market's the main thing, then everything else is like exterior, like, you know, small, you know, craft centers, villages, right? They call them villages, but they're more like centers where people go and they work. I'm guessing we're passing through the market area, right? Because over the right and the left is market. Mm. Yeah, the, yeah, the, the, the market is here. And then, you know, where we went in the modern, modern market is just, Facing us. Okay, my friends, we came here to a different part of town and we're going to Wasaga Pub. Wasaga. Oh, just another bar here in Kumasi where you can get some bitters, you can get some delicious beer. You know, their beer here is a club beer. They also have the Guinness that they make here. It's called like extra, extra foreign or something. It's like 7.5%. It's pretty good. There's also street food right here if you want. Some, some you know, kebabs, things on a stick and Wasaka Pub. Let's go inside, let's get a beer. I'm like 
dying. Today has been too hot. All right, so we have here Star, Gilder, ABC, Guinness, Malta by Guinness. They have some Heineken. I mean, they have so many different things. A few of them are from Ghana. Most of them are from Ghana, actually. Including the Guinness. That's a, four and extra. Sorry, guys, four and extra. I'll take that. Thank you, my friend. Thank you. Here we go. Guinness, four and extra. Brewed right here in Ghana. Mm, I love it. Oh, malty, chocolatey. So we had lunch around 2.30 in the afternoon. It is almost five, and I'm having basically a liner here with the kebab. I really want to eat it here. I don't want to take it home. It's still really hot, fresh. Ooh, this is on fire. Oh my God, it's on fire. Look at this. This pub is like basically open air. A lot of people here, they're watching some TV. That's why you hear that noise, right? Mm-hmm, and the sheep, oh wow. Oh man, the oil, the salt, the pepper. Mm. For me the best is lamb and goat, sheep as well. Oh my God, the fat layer, the gelatin. Oh, the beer is so refreshing. Mm. Ben, this is amazing. So good. So fire. We had CC's Chop Bar non stop there. From trying the bitters, going through, seeing the 10 different dishes. They have snail, they have goat, they have grass cutter. That bush means like a big rodent. Mm. Fantastic food. It's very different. I mean, whenever you come to African countries, please understand, it's very different culture, very exotic, no one uses utensils, always the hand. Mm. Oh wow, you guys are ready to know how good this is. I don't have to talk about it anymore. The best way to relax the body, feel good, is a chill cup of um, club beer, the number one beer in Ghana. Mm. Great stuff, you know. This and a beer, especially a Guinness stout. Mm, the best. And by the way, it is right now the end of January. It's winter, dry season, and it's easily 95 degrees outside. Like, it is so scorching hot. Lots of people doing different things, right? Over here to the left, people are like carving stuff. Over here to the right, there's like, you know, uh, what's it called? Uh, blacksmiths, Blacksmith. right? And then people selling right here, look. So on the road here in Ghana, you will never go hungry. If you don't want to eat on any of the side street vendors, you don't have to. All you have to do is buy some like dried plantains, some banana chips, you know, plantain chips. Uh, what else? They have water. I mean, they have so many things, buns. They have uh, tiger nuts. Tiger nuts? Yeah, they have a uh, cuckoo drink. I mean, whatever can, uh, you, you can take for the meantime, you will get it. And they're usually around the toll areas, wherever you have to pay, you know, whatever it is, five or 10 CDs. They're usually there, right? All the women are around. There's some men, but usually it's women with everything on their heads, right? And what do you think? We're like 20 minutes away? If there's no traffic, right? If there's traffic, this takes like an hour. Yeah. Is it? Okay. Right here. Okay. There's shops and their houses next to each other here? Yeah. yeah? Actually, they, they work in uh, different homes. So this is one of the oldest homes that they, they do that in craft printing. And these are the symbols, guys, right here. So the sword is, is there a sword? Because that's the royal, right? So right here we have some weavers. So all the symbols, right? There's this one. Beautiful, love it. Green's very nice. This one's badass. Look at this one. So good. So here at the center, they do weaving, they do printing. We're gonna meet up with Kochu and he's gonna give us a tour of the entire complex. My man, are you doing good? Good, and you? Very good. So they are now moving to inside. Let's okay. see the process. Then I'm talking about. The new back of the man. Huge, you're boiling all those pots, huh? Yeah. Oh man. 
It's hot in here. You can't escape the heat here. Yeah, <laughs> and got it. Sorry. No, it's fine. Well, now it heats now. In Tonso, they are making a dinkra crop. When somebody say a dinkra, a dinkra means farewell or goodbye. Farewell or goodbye. And they will prepare the traditional dye, only black dye, they prepare it here. So you already see it on fire. The dye came from this tree. And this tree, they call it badye. And badye is the back of the tree. So when you see the inside, you peel the back. So when you bring this one down, it's hard to so break down into smaller pieces. Like this, you leave it in water. There's fresh water for one day. After one day, to make it soft, you send it to the mortar. That's how they have this big mortar. You pan it like fufu. So you go like this. You pan it until you get it soft. So you need to hit. So the more you hit, and the more you get it soft. Mm -hmm. After panning, you get it soft like this. Okay, when we have this, you send it to the fire. You have to divide the liquid. Each one should be half. So they have one, two, three, four, five, six. When you look inside, some of the particles are inside now. Okay. You leave it on fire for four hours. And first four hours. And they use this knot. And these are the baskets. They use this one to sieve it or to screen like that. For you to take the particles out. This liquid back to the fire. Because you need to get this one. This one, they don't have any particles inside. So this is the first that you get from the back. So after getting this, and the next day you send this one back to fire again, then you keep on boiling it. And the more you boil it, the more it's getting dark. Black one. This is the color they need. If you don't got this one, you can use it to do your own stamping or to stamp the traditional club. And that's how they make the black dye. We just saw the entire process. Now let's go see the symbols. So after getting the dye from inside, you need to come and use the traditional symbols to do the stamping. And when you see this symbol, people are saying this one is made of wood. It's not wood, this is calabash. Oh, it's calabash. Until you know calabash. Yeah. It's a god. Because the olden days, you can't get the calabash to use. They use Yama Kasaba. This is 60 symbols. 60? Six zero for the old one. But now it's more than 60. So it's almost about 200 symbols. Got the new ones also coming. So there's like 60 plus symbols, and then from here you go to the printing area. So what's next? Well, I'm gonna pick three, right? Yes. Indikra. Indikra. Edinkra. Okay, Edinkra. Symbols. I'm taking this home to my daughters. So I have to do something that's about love, right? So I'm getting number 22, Hello. number 24, and number two. So unity, love, which is the heart, and sun, which is life. And here we have the kente, all different colors, right? So for my daughters, I'm going with a light blue. Light blue looks awesome. Yeah, and one more. Dark blue and light blue. They are two. You don't have pink? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm getting two. One for each girl. One pink, one blue. Uh -huh, mommy, yeah. Can we see how they do this? It's gonna be great. So do it right here on this table? So which one do you want me to start first? The heart. The heart. So you dip it. Then you shake it inside the pot. Now you take that down, go down. Remove the space.
Okay, so this is the finished product. So I'm going to dry it on the sand, about five minutes, for you to keep it for yourself. Thank you. How is this here? How is this here? Same from Alan Road. So that's what you can do here, guys. You can get a tour, see how they make the dye, come back, choose a few different symbols, then choose one of the cloths, one of the pieces of tente, right? Um, if you want, you can also buy some of these. These are for sale, right? All these are for sale. All for sale, right? What are the costs? It depends on the sizes. So let me show you the sizes. So if you, for instance, like this, it's 300 cents. Yeah, and the strips, some are 50. Some are hundred, it depends on the size. Yeah. And what I got my daughters it cost 50 CDs each. I think it's worth it, you know, $10 each. They're gonna have it forever and they're gonna always remember my time here in Kumasi. Well, at least I'll remember it when I see them, right? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Take care. Let's go. Next up, we're going to the Weaving Village. Weaving Village, so basically what we saw here in terms of weaving, we're gonna see over there, but like times 100. It's gonna be nuts. Isaac, where do we enter? Because there's like no village out here. This is like just like farmland. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, villages are separated with, by, with their farms. So basically, we're going to get to the village. Don't worry. <laughs> We've been on the main road the whole day. We made a right. And then it's just like farmland, trees, bush. Here and there you have houses. We haven't seen a village yet. I guess in the next village is the weaving village, right? That's it. Wow. Beautiful out here. The only thing is it's become really, really hot. Today it's 97 Fahrenheit. I'm feeling it on my head. Woo. We're in the car now with air conditioning. Thank the Lord. Okay, we made it. Look at this. And these guys right here are making cement blocks. Hey guys, how you doing? How you doing? I've never seen somebody do this. So he's getting the cement. He's putting it into this molder. He presses it, it pushes out. The other guy stacks it over there with the other 500 of them, right? Over here, look at this, how many he's making. He does all day long, all day. All right, let's go inside. Let's see this place. I would like to give you a brief history about the Kente Club. What I'm holding right now is a Kente strip. And strip weaving has existed in West Africa since the 11th century. So this has been with us long, long, long years. Before the existence of this type of weaving, we were having this one. That's the old, old one. In the olden days, after weaving this, they used the flint product to cover their nakedness. If you look at this picture. One of the Santi kings, when he realized that his people has knowledge about this, he selected those weavers and sent them to a village called Bontuku. Bontuku was a trading center near the present day La Côte d'Ivoire. So they went there to study the art from over there. When the weavers returned, they were confined in the king's palace, weaving only for the king. So Kente was mainly for the king in those days. If you are not a king, you will not be allowed to put on the cloth. But today, if you have your money to afford, you can buy any cloth that you want to buy. And the, 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 the next question is, uh, what is Kente? What does it mean? Kente is not just a cloth. Kente is a visual representation of history, philosophy. Actis and said value is a powerful cultural symbol and a source of pride both for Ghanaians and African diaspora. So the craft chronicles the local history, which reflects the cultural value of the people, portrays our culture. For example, uh, let's look at this one. This design means the road to success is not a smooth way. It is a rough road, it's a zigzag, filled with obstacles which can be surmounted only through constant tour. So we can communicate through the Kente designs. So how is Kente made? Very easy, okay? So cotton. Cotton is the number one product here in Ghana for Kente. Then they put it through industrial process and then they turn it into a string. They also have silk. They have other products that come from other countries around the world. But the main one here in Ghana is cotton. So here, you'll be moving back and forth so we have the required number. It's a little bit mathematical. Before you start, you ask yourself, how many pink do I need? How many blue do I need? You made all these calculations and they move back and forth till you have the required number. So this is just a demonstration. So this is the war plane. This is where you see all the weavers, right? This is the back. Yeah, so this is the finished product of the warp. And right from here, we are going to set up the loom. 
It simply means we are going to put every single thread into the weaving apparatus. We have the heddle, we have the beer, we have the shadow, the entire loom, and then we start weaving. We have three types of weaving here, simple, double, and then triple. From here, I'm going to show you all of them, simple, double, and then the triple. In this complex, 70 weavers, and they're all men. No women weave here. Only men. I had no idea about that. Usually yeah, yeah. you see the women weaving. Yeah, let me explain the reason why women are not weaving here. Uh, number one reason is superstition. Okay. The women have a belief that if you stay on the loop, you will never give birth to a child. Oh, wow. And secondly, as I told you earlier, in the olden, the kente was for the king alone. So if you are weaving as a woman and you menstruate, you have your period. You're not supposed to touch the cloth. Oh, wow. Yeah. And so over here, we have a few different people. So, wow. Look at this. All the weavers. Here we have like five. Here we have a dozen. So many. This huge, and this is nothing. Like, most of these are empty right now. So right in front of each weaver, we have the wharf. That's what he just showed us. And here, we have five guys working. And look, this guy has like a white and black design. Over here, this guy is a really colorful one. So it's like green, yellow, what else? Wow, green, yellow, pink, beautiful. I love that one, the colors there are gorgeous. And this one too, this one, incredible colors. I love, th that. what symbol is that? Yeah, we can live together, it's just a matter of understanding. That is the meaning of this one. We can live together. It's just a matter of understanding. So it means if there's understanding between two parties, they can live together. This guy doesn't stop. One of them is like Speedy Gonzalez there. He doesn't stop. He goes boom, 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 boom. And he's working with like six different colors. And over here, look at this, man. Another like dozen guys. Wow, this is impressive, guys. Look at this. So you have another like 25 guys here. The warps in the middle, right and left are all the guys weaving. So they're you know fixing the warp and they're weaving non-stop. Some of them are doing just solid colors. This guy's doing just solid red, which obviously that means danger. Over here, a few of them are doing you know different symbols, more colors. And that's basically guys, an incredible weaving center. I've never been to one this big. I've been to multiple um, on the Silk Road, like in Uzbekistan and China. And it's always women, it's never men. And over there, obviously it's silk. Here we're dealing with cotton. These are the types of places I love to go when I travel. The only thing is, right now it's 97 degrees Fahrenheit. There's no air conditioning. I'm super hot, but going up close to all these guys and just seeing how they do it, it's really, really remarkable. I mean, the different colors, technique, the speed, and you see their feet are moving, their hands are moving, and you know, that's how they do it. I mean, this is awesome. So a little different from the way they do silk, but at the same time, almost the same. This is assembly to support the youth. You see, most of the youth migrate to the big cities to work. So in order to uh, help them, not to migrate to the big cities, they are putting up this structure for them to weave. And more so, it happens to, if there's a rain, we can still weave. If there's a sun, we can still weave. I told you we have a simple double and then the triple. So this one, the simple weave. For simple weave, always the design is on the walk. The double weave are on the work. Yes. So single, all he does is just pass one you know, string through. Every time, that's it. The other ones, multiple. Okay, now we're getting to understand it. Sorry, my man, the heat, it's killing me. So next up, we're gonna see how they do the triple weave. You see, the first step, you lay the walk, and they set up the loom. Right now, he's setting up the loom. After setting up the loom, then, the actual weaving is done here. So he's weaving the triple one. The most complex one, it takes a lot of time, and very, very expensive. Yeah, the triple is very, very expensive. Three different colors, so he has, like a light yellow, a green, a red, and then the main warp is like a bright yellow. But the point Beautiful. is, uh, uh, the, the, the triple weave is not just a color, but rather is a term okay. that we use to describe this type of weave. No, okay. For triple weave, always design has covered the entire background. Uh, this is so interesting, dude. I'm so happy we came here. Thank you guys, thank you. <laughs> so when you're done touring the grounds, come back to the shop and buy yourself a kente. Oh, that's a huge one. Wow, it's huge. The, the strips all together. Okay, how much does this cost? This will cost you 1,700. 
So it's like 340 US dollars, something like that for this beautiful piece. Yeah. Wow, gorgeous, it dude. Can, it can You're be the king. As a best. If you're an Ashanti man, and you don't get at least one of these, then... You're supposed to get one, at least. I'm really That's sure that you are not. So you can also use this as a bed sheet, right? If you get cold, it's huge. Yeah, tablecloth, bed sheet, you can wear it. Love it, so multi-purpose, right? All right, my friends, I'm taking this beautiful one. It's basically a table runner, right? Either a table runner or you can put it on the wall, right? So there's another gift for another family member. So this kente costs 50, 10 US dollars, and this is the three, right? Yes. This is like the best the one, triple the triple weaving. Thank you, thank you, take care. All right, let's do it. Yeah. Now I'm really hungry. We had breakfast like at 10.30 in the morning, but it's like two in the afternoon now. My friend, thank you again. Thank you, you're the best. Woo! It's been an amazing day. Exploring all the craft villages in Kumasi. Hey, my friend, Fufu? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You think Fufu? Fufu, fufu. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the village is called Adawumasi. And he said 7,000, but it looks yeah, way less. No, no, no. Probably 750. Ah, okay. Yeah, because yeah, I'm looking around and I only see like 50 houses or something. I don't see that many houses. 7,000 would be big village, yeah. right? This is small. This is like dirt roads. This is underdeveloped, obviously. So we're going straight back to Kumasi. On the way, we'll stop and probably eat some fufu. <sighs> so here we are in Bonre, another Kente weaving village. But the weavers are a little bit behind uh, the walls, the houses here that we see. Yeah, so this place is actually more famous in terms of how many people weave. But the other one, we have access to the actual workshop area. Here, here you wouldn't have it. So that's the difference, right? And we're about, what, 45 minutes from Kumasi. <sighs> I need to eat. I need to eat right now. And right away, we found a place. We can eat some fufu. Ooh. Man, today I've been a little off because the heat over a little bug, so I've been taking easy the food. But right now I'm too hungry. I need to eat and drink a lot of water. Poo poo all day, big bowls. I want to take something to a bitter motivate. Huh? Me too. I need one. I need one. I need something. I need, I need some honey whiskey. Some honey whiskey. So this is the palm gin. We saw the entire process of how they make the gin when we were driving up from Elmina all the way up to Kumasi. We stopped at a palm farm, right? We saw them extracting the wine or the sap from the palm tree. You know, let it ferment, then distill. And this one, they actually mixed it with like, what do you say, a few different herbs. So what is this? Tiger nut inside. They put mahogany inside. They put uh, prekese inside. And this mahogany. Yeah, mahogany. Just the back of the tree. Let's try it. Okay. Oh, it's good. It's bitter. Mm. I think I'm good, bad. All right, so we're on the back to see them with the fufu. Hopefully, we can see them making it. But same process that we always seen, right? They they just bash it. Okay, so any here? Right. So this one we call it kokunte, and it's from the dried cas uh, cassava. They dry the cassava and they make flour, out of it. and that is the flour they cook, and we call it kokunte. It has another name, a uh, nickname. We call it face the wall. Face the wall. Okay, I'm trying that because I haven't tried it yet. And I've tried fufu many times. Look how big this one is. Yes. Two. Two. All right, first things first, wash hands. <laughs> oh man, you put a lot here, man. Look at this. Oh, too much. That's fine, it's fine. Here, pour me some water. Thank you, sir. Okay. Every single time. Yeah. This is how it's always been, right? Even before Corona? No. No? <laughs> oh, okay. So this is new. <laughs> okay. Perfect. Okay. So this is Coconte. So it's dry cassava flour, but it resembles fufu. Almost the same thing. So how do you eat it? Very easy. Break off a little piece, right? Mix it with the gravy, hot. I mean, for me, it's the same as fufu. Very, very similar. I don't see a difference. Mm -hmm. mm. And I got some goat, right? Yeah, I had some bush meat. Goat. I don't want bush meat. Mm. 
Oh, so good. Lots of flavor here. Lots of fat too. You know, obviously this is like straight from the village. So they're gonna give you like everything. Bones, fat, including skin. They try to break off a piece of the goat. Take off, oh, the chunk, right, like that. And then mix it with the fufu. To be honest, this is exotic. I think every meal I've had in Ghana has been exotic. Mm-hmm. Mm. I love this gravy. So delicious. It's, uh, it's not spicy. Tons of spices though. Mm. Has the the red oil for the pumpkin as well. Always like the red red. And usually you get in here to go and you go. Mmm, that piece is hard to eat. Try to go to everything next to the bone. Oh my god. This is, this is difficult, man. This is not easy. Mm -hmm. This is easy. Mm. And the reason you like this is because it's filling, right? So imagine a substitute for another carb. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow, it's like a nice stew. When you come to Ghana, this is how you're gonna eat every day. No, I'm good, man. This is awesome. I don't want more, man, because I'm uh, taking it easy with these exotic dishes. Even though it's not exotic for you guys, this is like one more. One more? No, no. <laughs> Ben here got two big fufus. Yeah. You're wild, my man. You're wild. Hmm. It's funny how it's like same as fufu. Textures, the similarity is almost the same. Like, I don't know how it's different, but I guess it is. Hmm. The gravy is delicious. The stew, hmm, fire. All right, guys, we are done with the day. That is it for Kumasi. We explored for the past 48 hours markets, craft villages. Today we did two different craft villages, so we saw them doing the, the symbols right, how they make the dye. You know, I bought some stuff for my kids. Then we went over to the weaving village, saw the entire thing start to finish. You know, this is something that is a huge piece of Ghanaian, Ghanaian culture. So you should definitely come out here, see the weavers, buy some stuff, always buy stuff, you know, support the locals, and then come to, you know, a local restaurant and eat their food, why not? And what's the name of it? Ahia. Ahia. And what are we gonna see there? We're going to see the cabbage. Basically, uh, they cap everything from doors, the mask to drums and stools so bring money because this is the place where you have to buy some craft goods i'm gonna buy some stuff for my kids maybe some like elephants giraffes there's also masks so there's tables i mean anything they can make from wood they do it here and i'm sure we're gonna stop for breakfast on the way because i'm hungry let's definitely, do it definitely let's go <laughs> my boy ben it's too early this is the city of traffic right yeah how long do you think it takes us to get out of here just to get out of the city. Oh, it will take us more than uh, an hour. Just to get out of the city? Yeah. yeah. Just to leave? Yes. Please. No way. Yes. So how long to get there? Two hours to get to the craft? To the village. In, oh no, in fact, it's uh, a big city extending to all that uh, place. Okay. So you may not know whether we are out of Kumasi or we are still in Kumasi. Yeah. Actually. And yeah, traffic, 7.30 in the morning. I'm really hungry. What do you think, Banku? Well, I'm thinking of uh, Bodier. Bodier. That is a uh, world plantain with uh, garden egg stew or uh, palabasos. I, I, I would love to have that one this morning. That's how we find it. <laughs> <laughs> right here we have the market. Actually, this is not the market. This is an extension of the market. So all the markets in Ghana extend farther and farther so all the roads leading up to the market you're gonna see this right vendors everywhere uh, markets that we knew it goes on the streets all the streets leading to the market also become uh, an opportunity place for the 
uh, women to sell. The, another market we call a Swami magazine. Here they only sell spare parts for vehicles. Yeah, over here to the left we have engines, we also have tires, like a million tires in a row, and it extends, right? So it's not just the street, it's behind in the next alleys. So now we know, Ben, in case we do get a flat tire, we come here, we get some, yeah. some yeah. spare tires. <laughs> Many of them are also mechanics, so you can also bring your car here and they will fix it for you. You're right, it's gonna take more than an hour to get out of here. Man, this is heavy traffic. I actually haven't experienced traffic like this in a long time. Because of coronavirus, my city is not that much traffic anymore. They like, you know, people don't go out as much, you know? Wow, this is intense. I mean, we haven't moved for like five minutes, just like an inch a minute or something crazy. I have to mention this because it's, it's something very unique. This city has so many preachers. Literally every street, there's like three or four just singing gospel, right? That's it. Okay, so we're here. It took us roughly one hour, right? I just love seeing them, the craftsmen, go deep and make masks. I saw a bunch of stuff in Accra, but here I think it's gonna be a bigger experience. Way more things going on. Oh, Genke? I will ask about the, about the body first. So there's a bunch of vendors here. Some of them have Genke, some have Watch It. We're looking for one in particular, but if not, we'll have some Watch It. I really like watch it, it's delicious. Okay, so this lady right here is making peanut soup. She's cutting yam. She's soaking the plantain, so that's what we want to eat, right? Yeah, I mean, she's just going to clean it inside this water. Okay. Put it inside the, uh, the fire. The fire, so she's going to boil it. She's going to boil it. Okay, so we have to wait a little bit. She said like maybe another hour, so we're going to go into the market and then come back for some breakfast. Unfortunately, breakfast is never like really early here. It's usually around 10. No one eats breakfast at 7 or 8 in the morning. No, we eat uh, rice, watch it, cocoa. Yeah, little things, but not this stuff. Okay, so let's go to the market. All the carpenters are here. Look at them, so many. Okay, we're gonna see drums, masks, tables, figurines. This is gonna be great. I love what this guy's making. Look at this. So, this is like three guys, you know, different face expressions. One's covering the ears, one's covering the eyes, one's covering the mouth. And this guy's making a board. So, this is one of the games they have here in Ghana. We call them three wise men. Three wise men. Say no evil, see no evil, hear no evil. What do you have, my friend? Everything. Wow. So, this is the three wise men. The guy just says, how much do you charge for this? The price yeah, what's is the 250 CDs. 250? So 250 is like 50 US dollars for this. Beautiful. Nice. And then over here, he has incredible elephants, right? So small figurines, big ones. Over here we have masks. Love it. Oh, the giraffe's awesome. Look at how big this giraffe is. Wow. How much for this one? 600? 120, right? 120 dollars. And the, the hippo though, the hippo. The hippo's amazing. 1,500 CDs? Yes, for the two. 300 bucks for these two big giants. And over here, this elephant. Beautiful, look at this elephant. So it's teak? Teak. It's teak, okay. So teak, and then on top you have metal, right? Yes. So it's like almost like plated, right? It is incredible. So many shops like this, right? Fertility though, yeah. yeah. This one is 70 CDs. 70 CDs, pretty good deal. You know, less than 20 bucks for this is a fertility doll. So you put this in somebody's house who really wants to have a kid, yeah. and hopefully God answers the prayers, right? Masks, giraffes, lovers. elephants. Lovers, giraffe lovers. Giraffe lovers? Yes. Beautiful, how much for this one? This one is 300 cities. 300 cities? There's so many things, even the stools, these are great, wow. So I've been looking around and I found this mask, which is gorgeous. They make it here, obviously, and they put the flag of Ghana on top. So it started at 150 and then 120 and we just dropped it to 80. Okay, so let me, let me hold on to it. Let me see which other thing I want though, let me see. I negotiated with my friend here and I'm getting this and that for 240 US dollars. This is amazing, these are gifts by the way. I'm giving this to one of my best friends who's getting, just got engaged. And this for my assistant. All right. 
I think it's a deal. 200, so 40 US dollars for those two amazing pieces. I mean, this is the place to come if you wanna buy craft goods. You know, things are big like this. It's hard to take them home, but luckily for me with British Airways, I can check in two bags. So I'm just gonna buy a duffel bag, wrap them with some clothing, and just put them in. All right, let's keep exploring. So next to this shop, there's like three other shops that are open. And look at this one. Wow, the amount of mass here is insane. I might take one of these. I don't know, this is all awesome. I mean, I'm not buying for myself. These are all gifts that I'm buying. I'm just a little worried about taking it on the plane, obviously. But I'm gonna see what I can take, especially for my kids. I was thinking like a giraffe. Oh, unfortunately, can't take that many big things with me, you know? I only have two bags I can check in, so I gotta be a little conservative on what I'm taking, right? Wow, this is just never ending craft goods, you know? I love crafts. Oh man, this is the best. Look, so it's the colors of Ghana and an elephant. Oh, and they have also a red one. Look at this one. I like the colors. He was telling me the one I like, that one I just saw, 350. He's like, you can negotiate, obviously, but I don't think I can get it down to like 100, and maybe 150, maybe 30 bucks for that one. Thank you. Wow, this is another shop, right? The only thing I don't see that much of are the animals. Like, oh, there are some, like some drops, right? Beautiful. It's super nice. The elephants? Oh, there they are. Okay, okay, cool. Woo! It's getting hot. Hello, how are you doing? Good? Thank you. It's never ending here, huh? So much. Love all the colors. The colors are the best. Uh, I don't know, it's hard. Wow, these are nice. Beautiful. Most of the masks that you will come across with bed on top are mainly used in nocturnal uh, uh, rituals, night events. This vendor is making some amazing stuff. So many beautiful masks, terrace, elephants, stools. But this mask is my favorite. So how'd you do this? How'd you make the colors? Uh, after I put the same paper on it, then I use, uh, we have uh, things that we, then I stain it. So you're saying 150 for this one? Yes. So, uh, 100. 100. 100 and we're done. Okay, no problem. 100? Yeah. Okay. The mask costs 100. That is 20 US dollars right here. Check out this lion, Ebony Wood, 350 for this one. Obviously negotiable, but 350 is something like $70, something like that, right? Beautiful, and they also have hippos. We have the cat here. President for real. This is scary, it's like a, like a scary wolf, man. <laughs> run, run. Like that, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Good luck, elephant. That's an American symbol, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I have some other stabs in there, right? A lot of nice things, right? Yeah, anything you want, you got. The only thing is, because there's no tourism right now, everybody wants to go to their shop. Literally getting pulled from every angle to go into their shop. So the only thing is, you feel bad, no? Not buying anything? This is your shop? Yeah, this is my own shop. That's, you know, I'm a designer, that's why people call me Gucci. And you know, I'm a creativity, see my stuff. Yeah. He has a lot of colorful goods here. I mean, it never ends in terms of how many things you can buy, right? Yeah. So elephants, here we have some chairs. Top of my six. Mass. Yeah. The mass never ends. I love these, the colors. Yeah. All the colors. That's the good thing that you're a designer, right? Yeah. Lots of colors. Yeah, no worries. If it's just brown or black, it's boring. <laughs> you know? Gotta have some colors. Yeah, nice. And these are like So what is this? Chairs? Yeah. It's like a yeah. stool? Yes, stool. Yeah, nice stool. Yeah. Wow. And these right here are like canes, right? Yeah, for the stick. Oh, look at this. I need to get something for my kids and my nephews. Yeah, yeah so two fifty. Uh, you know, it's like fifty dollars, yeah. but I mean, it's oh. craftsmanship. It's yeah. really nice, and we're supporting the locals, right? Okay, I got it. Thank you, bro. Thank it's you. It's a wholesale price. It's a wholesale price, yeah, right? It's a wholesale yeah, because anywhere else is gonna be double. Let's see them carving these amazing pieces. Look, here in the center, there's like five guys. They're all carving different things, right?
So Isaac, what are they doing here? They're making this stool, right? So each guy is doing a different piece of the stool. Here he's making a shoe. Is this? Oh, the sole, like, oh, not the sole, the, the piece inside. So to keep it from the sole in your foot, right? And this guy is making some like board, right? So this board is a game they play here. Oh, this is great. I mean, I love seeing this, just like the guys here and obviously you guys just can't come in here and film, you have to ask permission. And yeah, I mean, this is where it is, right? You can see them doing a million things here. Over there in the back, we have this guy doing giraffes. Yeah, I mean, this is what you have to do, you have to support the locals. Support locals always. More guys, huh? So here he's doing canes, more canes. So beautiful everything. Oh, he's painting it right there too? That's incredible. Hey guys, how you doing? Everything here is so unique. I love these canes. So if you want a cane, you can buy one. You can buy it with the colors, the flag of Ghana. Like this, look. It smells good, man. Walking stick has a symbol. And those symbols we call the Adinkra symbol. From here, we'll be going to that village. The Adinkra village. And you learn more about the symbol. This guy in front of me is adding the metal plating to the mask. So he designs it, then he cuts it, then he places it on. Yeah. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. This is the best part. I, I, you know, I've never seen this anywhere else in any other African country. Oh, Only yeah. here in Ghana they have this, where they put the beside. <laughs> I haven't seen it anywhere else, man. It's awesome. This is great. What a cool mask. And this is the finished product. Well, not completely finished. Still have to finish it. Oh, no, finish? After Sandpaper? Then polish is like this, the way. Okay. Polish it. Yeah, this is not a final product. So this vendor wants me to see your shop. Did you shop? Yes. Beautiful. See my picture over there. Amazing. So the mask we just saw being made is this one, right? So they have a small version and it's a cross on top, right? Yes. Beautiful. Obviously Christian country. And then over here is a bigger version. Very nice. Beautiful dude, like this is gorgeous. I love the craftsmanship. So nice. How much do you charge for this? This is 100 CDs. 100 CDs? Yes. And he has these beautiful drafts. Big ones though. This is like the size of my leg. Look at this. Yeah, it's huge. 24 inches. 24 inches? How much for this one? This is 180 CDs. 180 CDs? So that one is $20. This one's almost 40 US dollars. I think it's a good deal. I mean, obviously, that's the starting point. Yeah. 100 I take it. I take it right now. 100. I go. Okay. Yeah? Yes. You sure? Yes, I'm sure. This is this is going to go into my office. Thank you so much. I do appreciate. The lion? Yeah. The best, man, the best. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Isaac. Yes. You got my stuff, huh? All your stuff is here. It's pretty good price because I didn't spend anything compared to what I spent like in Malawi in terms of like craft goods. Here I spent so far, I think 550 was total what I spent, total. But I got everybody's gift, every single person. Guys, thank you. You're the man, thank you, thank you. Gotta try to cross the street without getting hit. Lots of traffic here. Dropped off everything in the car, and now we're going to eat. Breakfast is a little late, it's like 10.30 already, but it's fine. I'm so hungry now, full of a nice appetite. My friend, how you doing, good? So here they have plantains, they have yam, so both of them are boiled. They also have fish, they have two different uh, stews of fish, and they have a beef one, right? So I'm gonna go with fish, I'm gonna get some chili, some spice, I'm gonna get spicy. To be honest, I had a stomach problem last night, but now I'm better, now I feel good. So it's yam, plantain, over here fish, fish, beef, that's it. It's nice. And we're eating it right here, like on the side of the road, basically. They set up a table for us, and that's it. So I have um, boiled yam, 
with plantain, and then I have a, I say stew, the garden egg stew. Uh -huh. yes. Uh, onion, uh, aubergine, and then I have a meat. You have a plantain, yam with palapa sauce. Palapa sauce is made from coco yam leaves. So what do we do every time we sit down to eat? We wash our hands. Give you a little bowl of water, and that's it. Just wash. So here we go. Got some boiled yam. Got some plantains. It's a big meal. Not food. Mm. A little bit of this. Oh yeah. Mm. So basically, it's a plant, and it looks. It actually has texture of like scrambled eggs with herbs, but it's not scrambled eggs, no. Seed, the seeds. Gotta say, it was worth the wait. Mm -hmm. mm. Oh yeah, I love the yam. No, yam is nice, super dense. So at least it's not as bad as it would be in terms of like if it wasn't boiled, you can't even eat it. Remember, root vegetable yam. Like this. Nice and mushy. Mm -hmm. Almost the same as cassava. Almost the same as cassava. Not spicy at all. Mm. Oh, it's delicious. Mm -hmm. mm. The best game of the whole trip. I love plantain. And here we have the egg. Nice herbal egg. Oh, so fresh. This chicken, right? Mix this together. Egg. Some of this. The palm oil. So this is very oily. That's palm oil. That's the red one. It's the one you always have in red, red, right? And this is the experience, my friends. Right here on the side of the road. Mm, beef. So this reminds me more of like spinach or kale. Same taste, right? Look at all that oil. Look at the oil just like coming down. Whoa. So best thing to do is just like mush it all together. All the yam. If you want, you can mix up everything. If you don't like the oil, put it aside. Yeah, I think the oil is the best part. Like that, big bite. This red oil is so good. Mmm. That is breakfast. I'm done. Yeah, definitely need some soap. Go, go, all the way. Get it off. So our meal was 25 total, so it's five bucks. Gave her an extra five, so I gave her six dollars so she could let me film. And that's it, guys. That is breakfast and the craft village. This is the best craft village. You have to come here. Obviously, with COVID times, a lot of the vendors are closed, but there's still many shops. I mean, way more than you need, obviously. Every shop has hundreds and hundreds of different things you can buy, from masks, elephants, giraffes, stools. I mean, they have non-stop wood carvings. What's the name of this place? Anguia. 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 It's the name of the place. Yeah, I mean, this is the place you gotta go to. So if you go to Accra, but you don't come up here, obviously buy an Accra. But if you're gonna make your way up, all the way here to Kumasi, definitely come to this craft market, buy there, have some breakfast right here like we did. You know, I spent roughly $110 today and I got literally everybody that I need to get something. This trip was epic, so diverse, so exotic. I went super deep dive, I did everything I could. So many markets, craft vendors, food, street food. I did gourmet and modern food at the end. I mean, it was so diverse and unique and, and just a different type of travel for me. I've never dived so deep into Africa. You know, I've been to many countries in Africa, you know, Morocco, Malawi, what else? Rwanda, uh, Eswantini, right? Uh, Lesotho and South Africa, that's it. So this is the seventh, Ghana. I gotta give a big shout out to my friends at Yulinaiko Eco Tours. Yulinaiko, right? I'm hoping I'm saying that right. Cindy and Apollo for everything. Also to my guide Isaac and to my driver Ben. Thank you for taking me on this beautiful adventure. I, I don't even know how to start with this, but the trip was just great. 
and today is a travel day, right? So, what time is it? It's 9.47, we're boarding in 10 minutes. We are flying to London, six hour flight. The flight is packed, completely packed. The airport looks empty here, but there's only one flight taking off, so that's us. And uh, yeah, so six hour flight, night flight, sleep. When I get there, I have, I think, eight and a half hours, and I'm going to Gordon Ramsay's plain food restaurant. Gotta do it, gotta do it up. English breakfast, I might have some Scottish salmon. I, I'm gonna do it big. I'm gonna have a few different things. I wanna really experience that restaurant. Big fan of him. Gordon Ramsay, let's collaborate. Um, and then yeah, after that, I'm gonna explore the airport, see it all, and then have a nine and a half hour flight all the way down to Miami, and then finally see my kids. My daughter's waiting for me, I'm excited. Let's pack this up, let's go. Whoop. Sorry guys, mask on. Now let's go. All right guys, we're about to board the flight. They're calling rows one through 11, and in the very end, I'm in row 47. This is gonna be a super packed flight with COVID times, every single seat is taken. There's people all around me. Whatever, I'm gonna sleep the whole way, right? Night flight, let's go. Hi, David. Very good, you? Fine, you? Awesome. I like your smile, even though I can't see it. Thank you, Hope thank so. you. Next hour flight, I'm here in London Heathrow at Gordon Ramsay's Plain Food Restaurant. Love it, look at this place, incredible. So you have this little table here on the left, and here you have the menu, so you just use the barcode, so here we go, perfect. So what do you think, my friend? What's, what's the best thing? English breakfast? English breakfast always, man. Uh, double espresso right there? That's a, that's a tiny one. I should've got an Americano. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Definitely want that English breakfast. Just always poached eggs, always man. <laughs> always poached, yeah. I mean, I would I would do the Benedict, but what's better? Nah, let's do English breakfast. We're in England, right? <laughs> All right. Uh, any toast to go with it? Uh, toast. Brown, like mixed. Brown, brown. brown. Yeah. And the coffee, you never put sugar, man. Straight. Uh, any dietary requirements? I eat everything. Tell the, tell, the, tell the boss that. <laughs> Thank you. The best part about London is meeting all the ex Indians, the Indian expats. Go, English breakfast. Woo! Look at this. Oh, ho! So we got sausages, we have ham, we have monster mushrooms, monster tomatoes, poached eggs, and some beans. Oh, it's gonna be delicious. Gordon Ramsay, you are legit, my man. Wow, let me try some of this first. Some beans. Mm-hmm, mm. And this is a uh, standard, you know, English breakfast. Always like this, you know, depending on how you want your eggs. I like it poached, always poached eggs. Eggs Benedict is my favorite, but you know, I'm here. English breakfast for sure. We got some toast on the side, we got some butter, double espresso, and look at this, the mushrooms. Massive. Good touch, Gordon. Mmm. Mmm. So tasty. Oh, wow. It's nice, huge mushrooms. So I didn't tell you about this restaurant. It was opened in 2008, and this is Gordon Ramsay's first, first airport restaurant located in Terminal 5, right here in Departures. Mmm. Mmm. It's a good combination with the mushroom. Just makes everything, guys. Just makes it all. So this was the only full-service dining restaurant at Heathrow when it opened and changed the face of airport dining with its high-quality, global influence fare, which ranges from English breakfast to smoked Scottish salmon to butter chicken. If you don't have time to sit down, do it to go. And guys, it's paperless, right? So digital. I actually been through here so many times in Heathrow that I wanted to stop and I never did, but. Mm. Mm hmm. Today I'm here. Oh, wow. Nice sausage to just get everything right. Mix it all. Oh, the beans is what makes it for me. Mmm, this is a real hearty breakfast. Get some of this. Some of the sausage. I've been to England many times. I think uh, six times. Um, I've been to Cambridge, a few other towns around London, but mostly London. I came here for many conferences, world travel market, and every time I go for the English breakfast, I mean, at least a few times during the trip, right? Um, the only thing missing here is the black pudding. That's what I, I really, really enjoyed um, from the ones I've had before. Some of them are massive, some of them are smaller. 
but this is uh, standard, right? So you have a really, really hearty meal. Lots of meat. Mm hmm. Mm. I like these type of beans. This is the, not the brown beans. I don't even know the name of these beans, guys. Sorry. I'm dead tired. Mm hmm. And this is the way you do it. Like that. Get that yolk, you know, poached egg, mushroom. Mmm. Mmm. Crispy with the bacon, softness with the egg, nice yolk running through. Mmm. So, for me, the best part about this entire English breakfast is the baked beans. Baked beans. Bacon, I'm not a huge fan, but for here, I'll do it every time. English breakfast, get some of that yolk. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm. Then what you have to do, dip everything into this baked beans. Got a little sauce right there. Mm. Sweet. So sweet. Oh, so good. I'm very filling. Mm. Well, that's what they love here in the UK, right? You can find English breakfast in the UK and Ireland. Mm. Wow. Gordon Ramsay, I approve this. This English breakfast. And it's good. I mean, it's not huge, but for the price, I think it's perfect. It's a good way to go out, you know? Still have a long time, though. Still got like six hours to go. Coffee, oh man, I miss coffee. In Ghana, there was like no coffee. I had like a good coffee at the best hotels, and then the rest of the time, it's just like instant coffee, which is a no no for me. Yeah, yeah, we have a side of Scottish salmon, or yeah. we have the salmon with scrambled eggs. No, no, just the side. Just the salmon? Just the side. Yeah. Perfect, yeah, yeah. Because I finished, and I want to show you some more stuff getting Scottish salmon. I love to smoke salmon, and Scottish salmon is a little different. I'm reading about it here. It's one of the more mild flavored salmons on the market, higher fat content, and uh, buttery texture, mouth watery feel. Wow. Salmon and eggs, oh, or salmon with like toast. Ah, oh, so good. Oh, it's the best fish all day long. And here we go the lox. Lox, oily. Delicious fats. Mm hmm. Oh, wow. I'm gonna add some of this. I actually never add lemon, but we'll try it with that. Oh, it's like so buttery. It's cold. Mmm. Love this taste. Wow, so the sea right there. Mmm. Gordon, great selection with this guy's salmon. Mm-hmm. Mm. -hmm. mm. Oh. Wow. Mask on. Let's go see the guy make some coffees. My friend, make me something good. Special. What'd you make for me? Uh special coffee for you. So it's Africa, huh? <laughs> Incredible. Look at this. See for a little house, beautiful tree. And my name David. This guy's an artist. Love the coffee. The guy knows what he's doing. I mean, he's done like a Mickey Mouse, he's done a few different things. This is Africa. Mm. Oh, yeah. It's almost like a not cafe con leche, more like a cortadito. Way more coffee than the milk. Ooh, it's good. I don't add sugar. No sugar. Gordon Ramsay, thank you. Thank you for this beautiful place. Big fan of yours. Mm. One of the reasons why I love Gordon Ramsay is because he loves Indian food. I watched a few of his episodes on YouTube. The guy just dives deep. He had like an ant chutney one time. I was like, whoa, I have to go to wherever that village is in the middle of nowhere in India and just try that because that looked fire, like a spicy you know, ant chutney. Crazy. Oh, yeah, guys, just gonna relax. It's been a long journey. 2766. 2766. Can just stop. That's it. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. So 2766. Um, weird. I couldn't even add tip. But that's good. So that was the English breakfast is 1395. 
double espresso 410, smoked salmon 6. So I think in terms of pricey side, just double espresso, but they also gave me a free coffee, so that's great. Oh, service charge is here, okay. Service charge is 361, so the tip is included. Great, perfect. All right, a Ramsey Christmas, book for Christmas and New Year's today. Thank you. I'll see you very Thank you so much, bro. Thank you. You're the man. And this is Gordon Ramsay's plain food, like to go bags, right? So here's Gordon Ramsay's quick and delicious 25 pounds, another one 26 pounds, so a few different ones. They're all like 26 pounds, 26, 25, and 20. So pretty good. And you also have his books, cookbooks. This guy's a man. This is like the chef of all chefs right here. Thank you. My oh, man. Have a good day. Thank you. Thank you. Come back to Moldova. For sure. I want to drink the wine again. <laughs> I, I went for the festival. Yeah. I went for the wine festival. And I forgot to tell you guys, the restaurant is open every single day from 5 a.m. until 6 p.m. So when you land in Heathrow, you have to come through this security, right? And this is it, right here. Gordon Ramsay's, the restaurant you must visit when you come to this beautiful airport. Now, let's go explore. Oh, mask on. Let's go. 8.30 in the morning here, still have a bunch of hours to go, walking around, but everything's closed except some of the duty frees. You know, Hera's closed, this place is closed. I mean, it's not a ghost town, there's more people than last time, but it's still pretty empty. I mean, I'm just walking around and I don't see anywhere compared to what I saw back when I traveled here going to Kosovo in uh, October. Obviously, they were open right now, London, England, everything is closed indefinitely, which is very, very scary because a lot of people surviving. I mean, I have no idea how that works, but uh, yeah, guys, I'm gonna walk around, see if I find anything interesting. I actually wanted to get an Arsenal jersey, you know? That is my team here in London, but I don't see a shop. I don't think there's a shop here for Arsenal, which is crazy, they should. People buy jerseys all the time. World duty free. They got a lot of alcohol. Smirnoff, what is it? Bombay Sapphire, I'm good. No alcohol today. Still have about five hours to kill, so I'm gonna go up to the lounge. Super lucky I have access. Oh, so there I can relax, have another coffee. And yeah, because of COVID, the lounge I usually go to, which is on third floor, is closed. This is actually the better lounge, but obviously very little people here. Nice spread out, you have different sections, you have some glass walls, you have the fighters. Over here they have the bar, which obviously you can't get the alcohol. And over here to the right, we have the tarmac, so. All the planes right there. And this is what you do with a long layover. You just relax, try and enjoy yourself, uh, try to do some work. I'm gonna answer a billion emails right now. And then I'll, I'll get back to you in a second. Sorry, I am tired. This is David. You ready for the non-alcoholic wine? That's the Nine Elms, number 18. And you're from Goa, right? Yes, I'm from Goa. Another Goa. And my name is Fatima. Fatima. Yes, Perfect. nice to meet you. Thank you, pleasure. <laughs> Enjoy. Thank you. And yeah, so we're gonna try this Nine Elms. It's like a grape juice. Mm -hmm. Basically just like a fruity juice. It's good though. No alcohol. I mean, nine in the morning. Shouldn't be drinking ever. Oh, this is fire. Mm. You ready for the Americano? Yes, thank you. Right, yeah. We still have about two hours before boarding. Need an Americano to wake up. Oh, I'm so tired. Barely slept on that flight. It's like three hours. Lots of turbulence going over. Africa, insane. I'm trying to kill some time here. Layovers like this are really, really hard because, I mean, there's nothing to do, especially this airport. It's not like, um, you know, Singapore airport where you have so many things to do. Even Istanbul airport, there's more things, even a hotel, right? That's it, guys. That's basically London Heathrow, Gordon Ramsay's restaurant. I'm about to get on a flight. Hopefully we start boarding soon. I mean, a little less than two hours, so. Okay guys, so we're boarding in about 15 minutes. I'm headed over to gate C54. I have to get the train. So that's a transit to gate C52 through C66. Let's go. Wow. I need to get on that plane, I need to go to sleep. Transit is departing. Next stop, gates B32 to B48. Second stop, gates C52 to C66. Stop gates C52 to C66. Please take all belongings with you. 
So if you're going to the United States from London, there's extra security. So it says an extra like 15 to 30 minutes because they're gonna go through, they're gonna see your COVID test, they have to just make sure you have everything you need to get into the United States. <sighs> so stressful. As soon as I got to the gate, they gave us a, a little form. Just gotta fill it out, put your name, sign it, and that's it. Ready to go. Uh huh. It is required that you need to fill out the passenger disclosure form. If you do not have one with you, go get it. All right. Let's board this plane. It's gonna be a long one. Nine plus hours. Thank you. Thank you. All right, guys. So I'm here in 39A. You know, the only good thing with COVID time is that you get the whole row. The flight's half empty. And it's it, guys. My epic trip through Ghana is over. 12 days on the ground were just beautiful. Accra, Cape Coast, Elmina, Kumasi, Mono National Park, and Tamale. When you go to West Africa, go to Ghana, explore in depth, eat their food explore their culture and just see everything that is gone. There's so much going on every single second. It's incredible.